first world order radio finally finally we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio Get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance, the most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance, the most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. State of human concerns in existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. Order. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're gonna take this level up a notch. We're gonna have stuff to do here. This is not just gonna be about philosophies and theories, shit that works. <laughs> Peace. Once again, you're back with Dr. Alain. And today's um, radio show is going to be on these earthquakes. Um, this earthquake in which that just took place actually yesterday, in which that um, I've been receiving calls from all over the country, basically, all at least up and down the East Coast, um, in which that it was felt in North Florida, all the way up into. Boston, Massachusetts, and even above Boston, Massachusetts, into um, parts of um, Vermont and New Hampshire. And then it was felt as far west as um, Pennsylvania and Ohio, um, Kentucky. Now, there was an earthquake in which that took place in Colorado. Um, It was called Trinidad, Colorado. That was a 5.3 in which that occurred um, yesterday morning also. And then there was several earthquakes in which that took place in New York that was on the scale of like a 2.3 um, to a 2.8 in which that occurred um, yesterday. So all of this was going on. Now, um, when we look and we count up the various states, like, for example, we're talking about Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, uh, Maryland, Delaware, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, um, New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, um, parts of Vermont and New Hampshire all felt this. So we're talking about, in essence, over um, 12 to 13 states, if not more, on which that actually felt this, you know, um, how normal is that? You know, when we look at California, you know, California might reach from the, as far as compared to the, you know, to the East Coast, California um, reaches far down as to northern Florida and as far as up to um, Washington, D.C., you know, that is about the length of the state of California, you know. 
you know. So, but how normal is it for it to go through, um, you know, more than 12 states, you know, actually? You know, is that something on which that is uh, normal? Because they claim that something of this magnitude has not happened since 1944. But how many states was that then? Um, it was not, I can tell you for a fact, it was not as many states as it was yesterday. Um, they was talking about that 5.8 to 5.9 um, within um, Virginia and maybe parts of North Carolina, you know, but that was not talking about, you know, over 12 states, in which that we just finished counting out. You know, I mean, that is something in which that is uh, phenomenal. Now, when we get into it, there's certain things that we have to talk about, you know. Um, a lot of people are now saying that it's the harp, in which that um, I don't have any disagreement, you know, disagree, um, agreement, you know, with that um, scenario per se, because I know that they do have weaponry in which that is used to cause earthquakes. They also have titanic weaponry or electropulse beam weaponry, or what's called electromagnetic post beam weaponry. Um, like, for example, the Titanic plate weapons. Um, this was according to Secretary of Defense William S. Cohen, a Jew. Um, he quoted as saying that at the conference in April 1997, he says that others are engaging even in an eco type of terrorism, whereby they can alter the climate, set off earthquakes or volcanoes remotely through the use of electromagnetic waves. All right. Now, when I first got a glimpse of this technology, it was in the urban classic, the underground classic um, called Behold the Pale Horse by William Cooper. If you go to his section um, in Chapter 1, he speaks about silent weapons for quiet wars. And um, he made mention of certain things in which that um, would be used, such as energy, would be used in order to um, attempt to gain control of the world. In other words, um, the energy would be harvested in order to gain um, control of the world and promote this new world order in which that they are so um, desiredly um, bent upon, you know, like pinky in the brain, you know. Um, but there are also certain elements in which that is creeped up within this scenario in which that is based on Mother Nature, in which that um, they cannot um, somewhat fight against, you know. And uh, we spoke about, you know, these before. But let's hear what um, Hugo Chavez has to say about it because he says that, um, you know, Hugo Chavez, the president of Venezuela, he states that the hate the, um, the Haitian earthquake was caused by United States titanic weapon tests. And what we probably have gotten was um, a weapon test also. So and Venezuelan no. leader Hugo Chavez has once again accused the United States of playing God. But this time it's Haiti's disastrous earthquake that he thinks the U.S. was behind. Spanish newspaper ABC quotes Chavez as saying that the U.S. Navy launched a weapon capable of inducing a powerful earthquake off the shore of Haiti. He adds that this time it was only a drill, and the final target is destroying and taking over Iran. The existence of a tectonic weapon has never been proved, but its use is often suspected by conspiracy theorists. For example, the leader of Georgia's Green Party accused Russia of being behind an earthquake on Georgian territory in 2000. All right, so we see that um, that even um, the world leaders, uh, we just mentioned um, William S. Cohen, um, a Jew, and now we hear that um, Hugo Chavez also believed that there are titanic weapons being used. Um, of course, um, when you go and read the information on HARP, um, the high um, advanced Oreo Research Weaponry, or what is called Project or Program. Um, when you go and do your research on that, you'll find out that the towers are 360 towers and they're 72 feet tall. And when you get into geometry and numerology, you'll find out the signs behind the 360 and the, and the 72 feet. Um, that's based on some mathematical equations to 
God, you know, the number 72, as well as also to the 72 um, angels, cherubims and seraphims, you know. Um, so it, there's a lot of um, correlations here with their numerology and the way that they are um, trying to take the esoteric science and make it exoteric, you know, um, in order so that they can control certain aspects of civilization because there are things in which that they are building up against. Um, I don't know if you're, um, when you go and do some research on Ronald Reagan and his Star Wars defense program of the 1980s, um, he was with Gorbachev, and they were specifically, specifically speaking about if they was going to be attacked from an outside alien force, um, that they would have to band together in order to defend themselves. So, in a sense, this technology, um, especially HARP, is based on weather modification, mind control, as well as also producing volcanic and earthquakes within various regions. But the question is, can it extend through the amount of states in which that we have, um, in which that occurred yesterday? That's the question. You know, um, can the tectonic um, weaponry span that far? You know, these are the things that we have to do more research on, you know, because we know what they're afraid of, this external source, you know, or mechanism um, that they're afraid of. You know, of course, Dr. Malachi Z. York, um, as well as, as, well as uh, Dr. Deborah Blair and others have spoken about, um, as in Zachariah Ascension, has spoken about Nubiru or Nebiru, in which that is supposed to be returning. Of course, many think that it is Elenin, um, the comet in which that is returning here, supposedly by October the 16th, in which that would be exactly 16 years from um, the original Million Man March on Washington, D.C. Hence, yesterday, um, you know, of course, the, um, this quote-unquote um, earthquake arrived about 50 miles outside of Washington, D.C., you know, um, going towards Richmond, Virginia area in a little town called Mineral, you know. Um, could this be a um, correlation or, you know, or just a mere coincidence, you know, we'll see. But this is something on which that is being said by astrophysicist um, uh, Michio um, Kakaku. Um, he's a Japanese um, quantum physicist, and he is saying that this is what they need to be I'm aware of. Everybody, the sun is the source of all life, and it could mean the end of life as we know it. NASA did a study, and its findings are now out. We're not talking about global warming. A brand new government study on the very real destruct uh, destructive threat of solar storms. Check it out. The surface of the sun, a roiling mass of plasma and charged uh, high-energy particles. As we move to the launch pad, we can show exactly what we mean, escaping the surface of the sun and traveling through space to areas down here on Earth. Now, this giant fireball, if that ball hit the Earth and its magnetic shield, it would be devastating. I want to show you New York City at night. Times Square drove through here at 8 o'clock last night. Streets are empty. But the electric power grid would be wiped out by the current. Lights and computers, transportation, hospitals, all would go down. The study warns it would be a disaster, far worse than anything we have seen before. The menace of these sunstorms poses a bigger threat to more high-tech and advanced countries like the U.S. Everything from our sewage systems to our Wall Street banks operate with our power grid. And a game-changing solar storm that could hit at any time. So how worried should we be? Sounds like we should be. Michio Kaku is an astrophysicist and author of The Physics of the Impossible. Sir, good morning to you. Welcome back here. Glad to be on your show. Uh, now, w what I'm reading here scares me to death. Should I be that way? That's right. We're talking about a potential Katrina from outer space. Uh, Katrina caused about $100 billion in property damage. And unless we begin to make efforts now to reinforce our satellites and power grid, we could have something maybe 10 times bigger than Katrina because we're talking about the loss of all electricity and all satellite activity. We'd be thrown a hundred years back into the past. Michio, has this happened before? 
1859, we had a humongous storm that wiped out telegraph poles, and we tried to then estimate what kind of power could do that. And we now realize that we are very young in the space age. If something like the 1859 storm hit again, it would literally paralyze all the United States, not just for a day or an hour, but for months to years. Our transformers would short circuit and burn out. Satellites would be fried to a crisp. And the sun, however, has these storms every 11 years. Every 11 years, the magnetic field flips. But in 2012, we do expect perhaps, perhaps another big one. Well, we have never before in our history, in human history for that matter, relied so much on technology as we do today. And that's part of what they found in the study because we rely so much on our ability to communicate through our computers that they would all go down, which would handicap not just New York, but really the eastern half of the United States. That's what the study finds, which would be far worse than the blackout of New York from four years ago, Michio. That's right. Those blackouts only last for a few hours to a day. But if you start to short circuit all the transformers and blow out the satellites and fry the communications grid, then you're talking about knocking out uh, the United States uh, for months before we can get enough rescue crews and repairmen to handle not just one city, but hundreds of cities around the United States. You know, Michio, sometimes you come on here and you sound like the doctor of doom and gloom. Does this, well, th th does something like this keep you up at night? Um, it does, and I think with Katrina, you know, engineers knew that Katrina could happen, but they did nothing because they said that it's not going to happen while I'm around. Well, now we learned the lesson. You have to prepare for things, especially when you know that at some point it's inevitable that we're going to have another big one, like we had back in 1859, except this time we're totally dependent on electricity. Michio, thank you. Hope to see you in person next time. We'll take you on okay. the phone if we can. Michio Kaku, thank you for your time today. 1859. I mean, we're going back 150 years on that, Megan. Now he's wondering about 2012. Watch for this story. So as you see, or hear rather, um, they were about these gigantic mega flares bombarding the planet Earth by 2012. This is the real fear. All right, something that is LNN, the comet, in which that, you know, some state is new beetle, you know. Um, of course, that is all over the Internet right now. Um, you know, we have to analyze it. That's disinformation, you know. Um, but what is not disinformation is the fact that they are afraid of these solar flare activities. This is what Ronald Reagan um, and all of them was talking about with this Star Wars defense program was defending the planet Earth against um, the alien invasion. The alien invasion would have been the solar flare activities, not just necessarily the reptilians returning, as Dr. Debbie Blair says, or, um, or you know, beings on a ship, even though those things do exist. And many of them are here to witness the transformation of this planet from the third dimension to the fifth dimension, all right? Regardless of people want to believe in the alignment, you know, of 2012 or of the OMEC predictions, um, said Mayan predictions, um, we know for sure that there is going to be a galactical alignment with the central sun and the Pleiades called Alcyon, in which that will be aligned with the planet um, Earth through our solar system, through our sun, in which that our sun act as a magnifier um, of this electromagnetic energy as it comes in, and that's what it's doing now. This is the reason why for this solar plasma or corona mass ejections or CMEs, um, solar flares, as they say, um, super and mega solar flares in which that is bombarding the planet Earth. Um, he spoke about um, Michio um, Kakaku. He spoke about the Japanese physicist that we just heard. He spoke about the fact that the Transformers, will begin to start blowing. Well, that already started happening back in February when the solar flares started taking place. Matter of fact, it started on February the 14th on, um, on Love Day, or as they would call it, Valentine's Day. Um, it started already on that particular um, so-called holy day, a holiday, all right, in which that the solar flares began to start taking place. And from that time until this past summer, 
um, we have been hearing about transformers being blown all over the country, and I'm pretty sure all over the world. Anyone in which that is dependent upon this electrical um, current, as um, Kakaku was, um, the scientist Kakaku was speaking about, quantum physicist was speaking about. So we have to um, understand what the real threat is. The real threat is the solar flare activity. All right, this is what they are really afraid of, in which that could destroy um, the energy grid um, on the planet, particularly here, as you heard in the commentator um, in the um, in the newscast, particularly here on the eastern on the east board, on the eastern seaboard, or on the eastern coast. Um, and I'm just giving you that correlation because of the fact that um, this. Earthquake yesterday, said earthquake yesterday, resonated nearly the whole eastern coast. You know, but yet when they showed you, if you all was looking and paying attention to the news, when they showed you the area in which that this um, earthquake originated from, which was Mineral, um, a town outside, about 50-some-odd miles outside of Washington, D.C., going towards or near Richmond, Virginia, um, west of Washington, D.C., they said that it started in that particular area. Now, if you go to, um, it, when you look at that area, it was a really small um, um, fault line, very small. Nowhere near compared to that in Kentucky, um, Arkansas, and different other um, places. I mean, it was very, very small. And for it to start at that particular area, and then resonate through, you know, more than those 12 states that we spoke about earlier would have been phenomenal, you know, and no one is speaking about that, you know. But then they even spoke about on the news the possibilities of a tsunami occurring, you know. However, if you see an earthquake with the rippling effects going outward, then the tidal wave should be going out and not coming in. That's a, that's another um thing that we have to look at. Now, when you go to the book, uh, Behold a Pale Horse by William Cooper, uh, um, he speaks about, on page 115, about Mount Weather, on which that is just outside of a sleepy little town called Bluemont, Virginia, about 46 miles outside of west of Washington, D.C., in a wilderness covering what now is called the tougher granite, the toughest granite rock in the um, eastern United States, the area surrounded by sign marks, restricted area. And this insulation has been declared a restricted area. Unauthorized entrance is prohibited. Other signs states all persons and vehicles entering here on are liable to search, photographing, making notes, drawings, maps, or um, graphic representations of this area or its activities is prohibited. Such materials found in the possession of authorized persons will be confiscated. All right. Internal Security Act of 1950. The installation is beneath a mountain, and his name um, is in the West Virginia Office of Control and Conflict Operations. His nickname is Mount Weather. All right. It was ordered to be built by the Federal Civil Defense Administration, which is now the Federal Preparation or preparedness, excuse me, agency, all right? So this is the same area, this is the exact same area that they're saying that this earthquake originated from, near the exact same area, okay? Now, you might not find that a coincidence, I do, but once again, you have to go back and read information. William Bill Cooper, his book, Behold a Pale Horse, was written back in 1991 before any of this information was mainstream, before the harp was known, all right? We didn't know about the harp until um, 95, 96 is when we found out about the harp system. And that was from a book um, that angels don't play this harp, all right? So William Bill Cooper was already talking about this information in Behold a Pale Horse, I suggest that you go back and reread Behold a Pell Horse by William Bell Cooper, and you won't be um, so confused about um, the conspiracy theories because a lot of this information he already exposed back in the early 90s. Okay? 
Um, Nick Baggage is the individual who wrote the book, The Angel Don't Play This Harp. Angels Don't Play This Harp. So I suggest you get that book also. All right? But like I was saying is that we did not know about the harp system or any of that information by name until then. Um, of course, we know that um, naval intelligence, that Wayne Bill Cooper was native intelligence, and so therefore um, the information which that he found was, as he states within the book, Behold a Pale Horse, was information that he found um, and that he felt that needed to have gone public about the conspiracies and about this group referred to as the so-called Illuminati. As we have said many times before, we are the illuminated ones. That's who we are. All right, they're just holding our jock strap until, you know, we um, confiscate it, as we would say. But um, here's another um, audio in which that deals with the um, earthquake. Thanks, Anna. What an extraordinary day. It never rains, but it pours. So a huge earthquake on the northeastern seaboard area of the United States. It appears to have been centered in a town in southern Virginia around the town of Mineral. It's about 85 miles south of Washington, D.C., and it was uh, uh, felt all the way from North Carolina right the way up through Washington. They evacuated the Pentagon and uh, the White House there. This is Times Square in New York where people felt the quake there, and all the way north uh, from there, all the way up to Massachusetts and uh, around toward Cape Cod and Martha's Vineyard, where President Obama is currently on his summer holidays. Uh, Dominic Waghorn's our correspondent uh, in Washington, monitoring all this. No doubt you felt it yourself. Certainly did, Jeremy. Yes, you really wonder what's going to happen next this year. Uh, we, it's a, an eerie feeling standing on top of the Sky News building here in Washington with sirens howling around us. The streets are full of people evacuated from buildings. Behind me is the evacuated Capitol Hill building, completely empty of government workers. And over there is Union Station. As you can see, all the people that were in the station when this earthquake happened uh, have had to be uh, evacuated. They rushed out into the streets. The building we were in, uh, there was a sense of panic, actually, because a message went round that something had hit Capitol Hill. Uh, we rushed up onto the roof and fortunately uh, saw that that wasn't the case. And it appears to have been a, a 5.8 uh, earthquake on the Richter scale, um, something you don't expect to happen in Washington. I think there have been quakes in the past, but on this scale, I think it's pretty much unheard of. As you were saying, uh, it, the epicenter was to the south of here in southern Virginia, but people have reported their homes being shaken across this city, and we think JFK airports in New York is also uh, shut down as well as any number of uh, installations and buildings uh, here. I, I'm not sure there's any damage as such where we are. I did hear a big crash about five, ten minutes after the earthquake. But um, you can hear emergency helicopters in the sky, fire engines uh, driving around the capital. I'm not sure whether they're attending emergencies or the aftermath of this quake or not. But uh, for now, it seems that the workers in Washington out on the, uh, out on the grass uh, you know, this is the year where uh, unshakable Middle Eastern dictatorships have been brought from power, shaken from power. So, uh, you know, why not an earthquake in uh, Washington at 5.8 on the Richter scale? Dominic, thanks very much indeed. Extraordinary just to bring you up to date with the latest. Family, we're experiencing technical difficulties. If you can hear me in the chat room, please let me know. Can you hear us? All right, all right. 
Peace. All right. Shit, I don't even know where I was um, based on this nonsense that just happened. Yeah, they don't want y'all to know the real shit, obviously. Um, but um, we're not going to let them, um, you know, stop the flow. You know, ain't nothing they can do, period. You know, I, I'll make them damn folks less talk quicker than what's going on and fuck them up real bad. But that's another story, <laughs> as we all can do. You know what I'm saying? Because um, that's what we're here for. We're here to bring the rockets. You know what I'm saying, dumb motherfuckers? But um, anyway, let's get back to um, what we was talking about. Um, obviously, um, it must have struck a chord when we was building on um, the old pale horse. So I'm getting back and I'm getting ready to get back into the old pale horse. Once again, we come out Mount Weather, which happened to be about the exact same location as where they claimed that this started from. They claimed that it took place 50 miles outside of Washington, D.C., west of Washington, D.C., where this just happened to be the exact same area where they call this place Mount Weather. Now, Congress has repeatedly tried to discover the real purpose of Mount Weather, but so far has been unable to find out anything about the secret installation. Retired um, Air Force General Leslie Bry, director of the Federal Preparedness Agency, told the Senate Subcommittee on Constitutional Rights in September 1975, I'm not at liberty to describe precisely what the role or the mission and the capabilities that we have at Mount Weather or any other precise location. All right, so they are specifically saying that... Um, They're specifically saying that they do not have that ability, all right, um, in order to um, tell of that information. Of course, that was years ago. Um, however, it says that um, that the subcommittee on the constitutional rate charge at Mount Weather held dossiers on about at least 100,000 Americans. Um, he later um, alleged that the Mount Weather computers described as the best in the world can obtain millions of pieces of additional information on the personal lives of Americans um, simply by tapping the data source of any of all 96 federal relocation centers, all right? Um, he goes on to say that uh, William Cooper says, I know from my stint with the um, Office of Naval Intelligence that these dossiers consist of information collected about American patriots, men and women who were more likely to resist the destruction of our Constitution and the formation of the totalitarian um, police state under the New World Order. All right, so this is what William Cooper was saying. All right, now it says, um, he goes on to say, some sort of state that the Mount Weather is virtually an underground city, completely with dormitories, private apartments, streets, sidewalks, cafeterias, hotels, uh, excuse me, hospitals, Weather, I mean, um, water purification systems, power plants, office buildings, a lake fed by fresh water from underground springs, a massive transit system, and many other astonishing things. All right, this is what it says. That's the amount of weather. Now, this is the exact same location in which that they are saying that this um, so-called earthquake resonated from near Richmond, Virginia, outside of Washington, D.C., 50 miles west of Washington, D.C., um, Several dis, um, disrupting facts emerge when one researches Mount Weather. One is the conclusion that a complete parallel government exists at the site. Non-federal departments exist there: agriculture, um, commerce, um, HUD, HUD, interior, labor, state, transportation, and the treasury. Apparently, at least five federal agencies are also in residence: FCC, Select Service. Uh, Federal Power Commission, Civil um, Service Commission, and the Veterans Administration. Two privately owned corporations as office at um, Mount Weathers, the Federal Reserve and the United States Postal or Post Office. This is um, also a office of presidency, which makes all of this upsetting is that there is a president and a complete set of cabinet offices, officers and residents at Mount Weather. Who are they? And who appoints them, which is um, such a um, 
a thing provided for the Constitution of the United States of America. It says, Mount Weather is an operational center, the hub of over 96 other underground federal relocation centers scattered across the United States. The majority of them appear to be concentrated in Pennsylvania, Virginia, West Virginia, Maryland, and North Carolina. All right. Each of these facilities contains computer data banks holding information not on enemy agents or sovereign diplomats or suspected terrorists, but on American, um, but on American on civilians. It says a list of other files kept in the facility was furbished, furbished, or furnished, excuse me, to the subcommittee on the constitutional rights in 1975. The list includes military installations. Government facilities, um, communications, transportation, energy, and power, agriculture, manufacturing, wholesaling, retail services, manpower, financial, uh, medical, and educational institutions, sanitary facilities, population, housing, um, shelter, and stockpiles. So... The same areas in which that they have um, these um, installations and these connections are the same places in which that felt, you know, in the same areas in which that felt this um, earthquake, as a matter of fact, in which that came from that um, near that area. So um, this is no coincidence. No, um, this this is definitely no coincidence. Um, once again, um, however, their main concern. You know, in which that they are trying to do battle against all the solar solar flare activities. Now they speak about Elenin, which is this comet in which that's supposed to have entered our solar system since 1991, and in which that is um, spoken of as being Nubiru. Um I cannot tell you if that is a um, or, um, if that is a craft, um, an artificial craft. You know, some thought that Hellbop. Um, was um in the nineteen um ninety five ninety six that Hellbop was a um artificial um entity was was an actual UFO or craft, you know, we cannot say if Elenin is um per se, you know. Um some say that it's not acting as a comet. Some say that it is. So it's a lot of disinformation. I'm not gonna get people caught up onto that Simply do your research and find out exactly what is going on. That's what we need to do is our research. You know, that's what all of this is about. All right? So what we're going to do is um, go to the lines and take questions, and we got 8530 ending in 8530. Peace. Peace. 8530, on the line. All right, we'll go to the next one. Zero six one seven, ending in zero six one seven. You're on the line. Zero six one seven. You're on the line. Peace. All right, two eight six eight. You're on the line. Two six two eight six eight. You're on the line. New York, beginning seven one eight. You're on the line. Peace, peace, Ali. Peace. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to um, speak about the earthquake a little bit. Um, yeah. When, when I, I I was in the bathroom and um you know I'm in the project so you know the building was swaying and I told my my lady's daughter to you know turn on the TV and when she turned it on they showed two epicenters they showed one in Virginia blinking and they showed one um right over North Jersey and but they never elaborated on on, on the one that was um uh, upstate New York that was over right over um North Jersey. So I don't know if two earthquakes went off at the same time, but I don't know if you knew anything about it. 
Yeah. Um, my brother called me and told me that there was two earthquakes in which that occurred in New York, in which that was around a 2.3, 2.8 Richter scale, in which that did take place um, within those um, within your area. Okay, so so uh, all right, so one went off up, up up here also. Yes. At the same time, the the same time the one in Virginia went off yesterday. Around the same time, yes. Wow, but I never heard the news really elaborate on the one upstate though. They just showed two okay. epicenters. Right. Yeah, and they only talked about the one in Virginia. You're right. All right, bro. That's okay. all I have. Peace. Oh, thank you. All right, we're going to call it five six zero three. You're on the line. Five six zero three, you're on the line. North Carolina, nine one zero. And then in five six zero three, you're on the line. Hello. I just wanted to comp- I wanted to make a comment on um, the yes. oil statement number seventy two, where it stated that the prophet once said that there was going to be an earthquake that was split the United States in two, brother. And I was just wondering, are we seeing the forefront of that? Are we seeing this come to pass now? Oh, no doubt. Um, you know, um, a lot of the information on which that prophet Nabi Ali, as far as in his prophecies, um, stated, we're seeing right now um, in today's time. Um, you know, the fact that he made mention of the fact that we might know of him, you know, until 50 years and know what he had done until 50 years later. Well, it didn't seem until, you know, 1980s that we started reawakening ourselves back to Prophet Nobadra Ali. Um, you know, so um, a lot of the prophecies in which that is stated, his oral traditions, are definitely coming true and coming to pass. It seems um, that we definitely need to go back and research and do some um, studies on Prophet Nobadra Ali and what he was saying. No doubt about it. All right, we're going to the next call, um, 302, ending in 5089. You're on the line. Peace. 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 Brother Messiah. Good Greetings, brother. Virginia. How you doing? All right. How you doing, brother? I'm doing All right, well. Um, I, my question is, um, you, you know the, the fabrication of what an actual alien or being is from another existence or another um, dimension, for that matter. Um, right. My my question is is uh, what does that have? Does it have anything to do with the earthquake phenomenon that just took place? Well, they are saying that based on the solar flag activity, that solar flag activity, based on how much energy is released from the sun, it can cause earthquakes and volcanic activities because of the upswelling of energy or because of the energy that has become trapped within our atmosphere um, uh, a um, certain amount. And then also they'll say that based on Elenin being in certain alignments with um, um, with us in certain positions in that solar system has also been able to influence um, volcanic and earthquake activity. So we're just putting everything out there on the line and trying to see um, – you know, what is it that they're combating against? Because we know that the European, Albion, he's always fighting against something. What is the threat in which that scares him the most? Well, we just finished hearing from a quantum physicist, Japanese, um, Michio um, um, Kakaku. He said that it's solar flares, and I am um, and I'm with him in agreement. I'm, I'm in agreement with him on that, you know, because of the simple factors is that um, – Back in the 1980s, I remember as a child in the fifth grade, I was listening to Ronald Reagan spoke about speaking about you know Gorbachev and him um, having to put down their differences and having to come together if there was a, ever a threat from outside, um, um, an ever outside threat. Now we know that back to Mount York speaks about extraterrestrials as astral, terror, astral. Now what is astral? Astral is star energy, and then right. extra terror. Terror is Earth. So extra energy or extra star energy on Earth. So we know that normally 300,000 tons of stardust energy falls to the planet Earth daily. Well, when there's solar flare activities, you know, such as super flares and mega flares, that means that 
double to triple times the amount of stardust energy in which that falls, in which that influences the transformation of our DNA. And this is what fears them, is that this solar, these solar flare activities are going to trigger our DNA, transforming us into the extraterrestrials. Okay. Because remember, Terra is Terranians also, which means that we are the Terranians. We are the beings of the Earth. We are Earthlings, Earthlings. And so when we gather this energy and start to store it and collect it, it changes our DNA. We have about maybe 24 um, improper codings within our DNA. And what happens is that with more solar flare activity taking place, it corrects those, um, those um, errors in our genes. So this is what they're afraid of, transforming us from Homo sapiens sapiens to Homo Christos, in other words, into Neos, into Heroes. Christ. Christ. Thank you. <laughs> All right. All right. So that's that, that's that's the fear. That's what that's what they're really afraid of. But um, thank you, brother, for calling in. We're gonna go to the next caller. Okay, brother. Peace. Peace. All right. Detroit, you on the line. Three one three. Um, ended in three zero five three. You on the line. You're on the line, 3053. You got a question? Um, yes. Um, I just came in on the last end of this, and um, I really don't have a, a question per se, but um, you basically, was, the caller had called in and said something about there were two earthquakes, one in upstate New York and the other in Virginia. Yes, well, in which that occurred around the same time period, yes. So why are they speaking only on the one? Um, because that is the largest one in which that supposedly resonated from out of Richmond, Virginia, or 50 miles or so outside of Washington, D.C. And being that D.C. is the hub of the government, that's the reason why they're focusing more on that. But they did say um, that New York was definitely um, hit with um, that, and, um, of course, um, based on um, my calls on which that I have received from individuals in the New York region, they told me that there was definitely more than just one in which that did occur. And then yesterday morning, before that earthquake, there was already one in, um, in Trinidad, Colorado. So there was one in which that took place in Colorado, and then all of a sudden it took place throughout more than 12 to 13 states throughout um, the eastern seaboard coming into um, the Midwest. Oh, okay. Now, how will this, how do we prepare for, you know, these kind of disasters like that? What do what do we do to get ourselves ready for it? Well, physically, um, you will want to make sure that you have um, enough water um, because that's going to be mm -hmm. the main thing is, um, is water supply. Um, you want to make sure that you have um, flashlights, you know, um, or some way in order to have light, um, matches, candles, make sure you have an um, emergency kit, survival kit. Make sure you have the proper herbs in which that you would need, you know, such as cayenne pepper in which that can stop the flow of um, hemorrhaging, whether it's external or internal, just in case if someone is, you know, hurt. Um, make sure you have golden seal. Um, and um, black walnut, in which that helps with the neutralization of poisons and toxins. Um, right. Garlic, in which that helps with the removal of parasites and worms, um, because just in case if you have to drink from other water supply sources and you might not know their content, at least you have the herbs in order to combat um, those problems. Um Okay. Just, just, just common sense things in which that you would know that you would need. Make sure that you have that packed up so that you can that definitely store. Make sure you have, um, for the lack of it, canned foods, um, bags of um, rice, um, preferably brown rice. Make sure you have um, a pot or pan or something in which that you can cook and open fire just in case if you have to be outside, you know, for a certain time period or whatever the case is. You know, because we're talking about massive destruction, if that does occur, which I doubt, um, 
Right. But if it did, um, you definitely want to make sure that you have everything in which that you would need. And like I said, it's just based on um, a lot of common sense things in which that you, you you know, what you know that you would need as well as also your family. Um, of course, mm-hmm. um, taking um, extra pair of clothes, um, you know, um, you know, duffel bags. So our you know, basic survival so. gear to just to be ready in case. Right. Right. Okay, make sure that, that makes sense. That. Right, because that's what the military right. has. The military does this right. on um, on the basis. I know I got trained um, um, after um, in JRTC. I got trained for more than two weeks at Fort Bragg coming out of high school, you know, and they put us through um, through the survival um, tests uh, with, the inf- with some of the same information which that I'm telling you. So um, in the military, they get taught this, you know, whether they're in the National Guards or, you know, whatever military affiliation which that they have, all of them know the same information. So if you've never had it, I suggest that people who have not gone through military training um, go and do some research on it so that, you know, they can have, um, you know, that same type of um, protection and survival, you know, um, you know, understanding. Yeah, that reminds and me also, of the book, so, the Art of, um, on the East the Coast, they War. probably didn't want the people to panic because, a lot of the ninety percent of the people on the East Coast have never experienced an earthquake, so that could have been why they didn't tell you about the one in New York, you know. And then also oh. with the um, tornado that's coming too, you know. So a lot and of people are in panic, you know. Um, yeah, thank you, God, a hurricane. Also, too, we've seen a naval map from the Navy in which they were showing the whole East Coast shaved off. You know, it's called I Am really? America. You might want to. Yeah, yeah, it was about so. at least 100 miles inland. Um, if you um, didn't live more than 100 miles inland, then a lot of the um, areas on the eastern seaboard would definitely have been shaved off according to this map. Oh, really? Ooh. Yeah. So this and is this is I Am America, you say? Yes, I am. Mm-hmm. But this is a map in which that we've seen back during the 90s and which that I think we still have a copy of. Um, so, you know, these are things in which that we definitely have to prepare for just in case, you know. Okay. Um, see, they're, they're battling for their lives on this planet, you know what I'm saying? They're the only ones in which that would get wiped out based on the solar flare activity. Those who have melanin would be able to encapsulize the energy and to transform ourselves into light beings or ethereans. You know, mm-hmm. in other words, fifth-dimensional beings, in which that, that's what I was talking about earlier, is that the earth is moving, is making a quantum leap. It is jumping from a third-dimensional state to a fifth-dimensional state or density level. Now, the third dimension deals with length, width, and height. The fourth dimension deals with depth, so hence time and space. The fifth dimension deals with energy. So we're moving into the stages of being able to harness energy, but we're going to do it physically. They have to do it through technology. And this is what everything in which that they're doing is based on, is harnessing energy through technology. But we can do the same thing by simply going to the sun and um, absorbing the energy for about an hour by deep breathing in order to um, give ourselves that same capability that they're doing and actually have a far greater range than what they're doing with their technology. This mm-hmm. is what we have to realize, and this is what we have to come to the conclusion of. As we prepare physically, you know what I'm saying, for certain things to um, change. Because we're not going to change physically in that sense, but DNA-wise, we're going to change. Um, um, we will be able to see our light bodies much more easier, being that we will be fifth-dimensional beings. Mm. Okay? So these are the things okay. in which that are occurring. These are the things in which that they are frightened of. Um, but it's not going to stop us from doing what we um, have to do. It's not going to stop anything that's in the process. This is what the whole OMEC calendar is based on. It's now, what did I get that, like that OMEC calendar? Oh, that sounds interesting, what you're saying. Well, the OMEC calendar is what is called the Mayan calendar. So if you right. do, um, um, that's what it's referred to as, is the Mayan calendar, but it's actually the OMEC calendar. The OMECs are the ones who um, brought forth that calendar, being that day was the... Um, Ancient Dogons, and then the ancient Dogons with the ancient Egyptians, so right. um, or Marian. So this is where the information comes from. Actually, over eight thousand years ago, when the Dogon left from out of Egypt, or what is called Kemet. So Kemet, uh, that right. information um, you can get from offline, and you will see mm-hmm. in the center um, an image of the best 
or the Twa person with the tongue stuck out. This is the same image that they have in Egypt. Um, right. When you go and look at the best, the tongue being stuck out. The tongue being stuck out symbolizes um, being able to um, control time and space with speech. Mm-hmm. That's what that is symbolic to. All right. In other words, the magic wand, um, in a sense, is also the tongue as well as also the mind. So whatever resonates within the mind can be spoken and manifested. As we know, that thought travels 24 billion miles per second. Once it's slowed down to the speed of light, 186,000 miles per second, then light is slowed down to sound, which is 1,120 feet per second. So we know that each transition from thought, light, sound, sound is what produces geometrical shapes or bring things into fruition or manifestation. Okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. You're, go, you're welcome. You're going to go to the next caller. Thank you, thank, thank, thank you for giving me that information. I appreciate it. And I enjoy this um, radio program. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for listening. Also, too, All right. You're going to go to caller um, 614. Is true? And then in 4512. Peace, God. Peace, God. This is your man, Brother Insight, a.k.a. Brother Morgan. What's going on, family? Oh, Brother D in hey, the hey, building. Hey, Brother D Peace in the building. Queen. What's up? What's up, God? Right, you know, this is, <laughs> you know, this is, you know, you've been blowing up, I've been blowing up, and it's crazy because my man, uh, shout out to Duke of Tears, I was listening to his show Monday, and I called in, and the brother that came on right before me, God, this was Monday night, and about 9.30, he was like, man, we just had a big thunderstorm up here. It rained real hard for about an hour and a half, and between 7 and 7.30, the sky was bright orange, and it was like changing colors and shit, right? So I sat here and told my wife, I said, either that solar flare is about to be a fucking earthquake or something, the heart machine is getting cranked up. Because from learning from you, as well as Nick Bag is reading his book, you guys talk about how when the heart machine is in, in use, how the, the sky will change these crazy different colors. So now right. everybody on site is like, oh, man, you prophesied that shit. I'm like, no, I didn't prophesy nothing. I just did my due diligence and study and knew that something was on the horizon. You know what I'm saying? So right. shout out to the brother in New York that, that that told us 24 hours before it actually hit what was going to happen, and he didn't even know. You know what I mean? So, oh, he man. knew. <laughs> That's the spirit. So let, me, let, me, let me ask you this, fam. So what? What like, we know the hawks started uh, causing these earthquakes. What about these hurricanes that's coming? I'm hearing that they're picking up momentum. They're supposed to be into Jacksonville, Tampa, Florida, certain places in Miami. Do you, you have any information that you're privy to about these uh, actual hurricanes that's supposed to be hitting uh, Florida this weekend? Well, we do know that um, all of this was going to be cranked up by October. I, um, you know that was based on the so-called comet coming in, in which that they claim. Um, is New Biddle, and that's supposed to be reaching us right. by October the 16th, you know, being the closest in the sky to us during that time period. So with that, you know, of course comes hurricanes, tornadoes, um, supposedly all types of natural disasters, volcanic activities, as well as also earthquakes. You know, that's right. something in which that happens um, naturally when comets come through. They're called the Great Harbingers. You know, in other words, um, when they come, you know, they bring such d- disasters as that. Um, the last time... Um, we um, had one was you know of that magnitude was in '95 uh, with the comet mm-hmm. El Bob, which that brought um, the El Nino, right, right, you know, which that um, they was um, you know able to um, you know begin you know playing with the harp system then in a sense you know but there was also natural disasters in which that was occurring with a lot of flooding, a lot of um, volcanic activity was taking place, earthquakes was happening all over, and then if you get the information that's online about El Nino you know, coming in, you know, that based on certain alignments with other planets, it has also caused some disruption such as earthquakes upon this planet, you mm-hmm. know. So I think this is all in correlation, you know, to um, Elenin coming in and these hurricanes cranking up um, around the exact same time period. You know, we got to see, you know, more of what's going on. Once again, to me, the harp system is is there to help combat against what is taking place naturally. But because mm. they cannot specifically control the weather, they can influence it. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's called weather modification, <coughs> not weather control. So they right. can modify the conditions but there's always an end result for when you you know, when you know, when you fuck with karma. 
Right. You know, um, every time that you try to use low magic in order to control um, events, there's always a repercussion. There's always a consequence. That's cause and effect. That's what you sow. That's karma. You know what I'm saying? What goes around comes around. So this is some of the things in which that takes place when they are trying to control the climate and the weather conditions on the planet Earth. They're trying to. But normally what they do is just influence it. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we ourselves, as we said up there when we came to Columbia, um, Columbia, you know, we came up to, to Ohio. Columbus. Columbus, yeah. right, to Columbus, um, Ohio, we, we specifically said that, you know, the people who control, who can control the weather, more than just influence it or us, the people of it's color, us, right. the melanated Man. people. And we said that right. we can control the weather through what? Exciting ourselves through dance and meditation, breathing. through right. breathing, and actually focusing yeah. our minds on what we want to see, whether it's going to be the Invested, sun, whether yeah. it's going to be the rain, or whatever the conditions in which that we want. So we shouldn't fear anything. We, what we need to do is start mastering ourselves and coming together as a group. All right, we used to have a group. Yes. About 10 years ago, we had a group in which that we used to come together, about 20 of us, in which that we used to control um, 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 the weather conditions. And we used to, knock, and we used to be able to, um, to knock harp out. Mm. Every time that we knew that they was getting ready to crank it up, we would just knock it out. We would imagine ourselves as being giants and just going through those 360, um, 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 you know, antennas and just stopping the fuck out of them. Wow. wow. You know, so this is what we have to do. You know, we have to go back to our um our um spiritual sciences. You know what I'm saying? The ancestors are on our side. You know, we just have to become Absolutely. more in tune with them. And in tune, you know, by Absolutely. becoming more in tune with them, you know, and I mean why else would they try to disrupt the communication between us and our ancestors by putting the harp in the ionosphere, by putting the harp system um um putting those electro pulse beams within the ionosphere um, to disrupt the ancestral connection between those who have passed on and us here on Earth. They're trying to do that so that we won't know when these certain things are coming. But as you've seen and as you heard, um, it's still happening. We're still we're still getting connections. The brother in New York um, spoke about it. You was able to put it together. You know what I'm saying through your reading and information. So it's still coming through regardless. So they 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 can do it. They have an influence, but they can't control it. Right. It still, um, it still comes through. Okay. Yep. And let, and let me say this in closing, Ali. I want you to go on on this for all the nations, because I got family members that still all oh, that today. Um, yesterday wasn't a harp. You know what I'm saying? That that was Mother Nature because the animals was running. I'm like, man, the animals right. was animals, running in Japan. Right. It, you know right. what I'm saying? The animals right. So, well, shoot, the animals was running. Um, um, they was acting crazy and running. Um, here. <laughs> right. Everywhere, you know, I mean, okay. they run every time. Whether whether it's Mother Nature or the the, the beast, the, the animals are always right. going to run because they're they're more in tune to what's going on than we are. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So, man, so yeah, man. Thank you for always setting the record straight, brother. Brothers like you out here, you know, what I'm saying, laying the foundation, carrying the torch from from the ancestors like Noble Jew Ali, and you know what I'm saying? Like, man, just just peace to you, God, man. Big ups and peace to the queen, man. I'm oh, definitely gonna keep listening and support he's everything y'all do. Um, go to his, go to his, um, go to his blog talk radio show, Insight, brother Insight. This, this who we're talking to, brother Insight, um, brother Phenomenal yes, on the air. Um, y'all definitely got to go every and support Sunday. the brother. That's right, every Sunday. Um, what time? Um, yes. Give give out your information, brother D. Yeah, it's six to eight on blog talk radio, same station. Um, our call in number is six one nine three nine three two eight one three. And then if you can't, if you got internet access, just go to Blog Talk Radio and put in Insightful Hour, and that's every Sunday from six to eight. And actually, we're going in on the Illuminati this Sunday. You know what I'm saying? So we go. It's funny how all our shows be tying together, man. So we go tie and harp to the Illuminati and the whole nine and this whole earthquake, and also the earthquake that you spoke about earlier in Colorado that the media is just keeping a blind eye to. So we go get into all that's that, right. man. That's right. So come That's and check right. us out, man. Like I said, peace to you and the queen. Keep doing what y'all doing. I'm looking to get out to North Carolina, if not the end of this year, next year, to come in, uh, and, and build with y'all some more, man. I appreciate that. Uh, peace. All right, fam. Peace and blessings. All right, we're going to call a four 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 Georgia. Peace and blessings. 
Peace and blessings, Peace brother. Peace and blessings, Doc. Good. Uh, I'm all for uh, getting that group back together to uh, spiritually uh, fight uh, for what's going on. Uh, I heard you say you had a group of about 20 people one time that would right. just meditate on certain issues, and I think right. it should be groups in every part of this nation that are aware of what's going on around us because i got a strong feeling. Uh, I was at the hospital yesterday, and uh, I happened to text the queen, and she was telling me about the earthquake. And the first thing popped in my mind was the harp system. Sure, right. they can influence, but they can't control. And there's no way that they can stop us from communicating with our ancestors. That's so I got right. a strong vibe. I got a strong vibe I'm feeling right now that things are going to transpire. And uh, our people need to be forewarned and prepared because uh, right. it's like things are, things are popping up and nobody's, you know, really being aware of them. But things are taking place in a kind of strange way. And we're getting close. I feel spiritually feel that we're getting closer and closer. And as a people, melanated people, we're definitely going to have to join hands in order for us to survive what's to come. And that's basically what I have to say. No doubt. Appreciate Peace and blessings to the... um, Everybody, okay. please send out your prayers to Brother Dwayne. Um, he's the brother which that we um, told you all about before who got shot in the neck. Um, you know, um, he's Quiet. the brother who's recovering. Right. Please send forth your um, your blessings and your energy towards the brother, those who are Reiki healers, Pranic healers, Qigong practitioners, Tai Chi practitioners, send forth your energy t- towards Brother Dwayne Waters, all right? A matter of fact, we're going to take a moment, and what we're going to do is gather our thoughts and send forth the brother some energy right now, all right? So, Brother Dwayne, open yourself up. Um, for those, the only thing you need to know is chant his name three times, Dwayne Waters, Dwayne Waters, Dwayne Waters, and then just... Send forth your energy to the brother channel. Let the energy channel through you as a vessel. Just open yourself up as a vessel and then channel the energy through your hands to Dwayne Waters. All you need to know is his name. You don't even have to see a picture or anything. He'll feel the energy. Let's begin. We'll take a moment out right now, about two minutes, and we'll send forth this energy. Let's do it. Okay, do we appreciate you, um, appreciate you, um, Brother Dwayne? I appreciate you all, and keep up all the right. good work, Dr. Eileen, and uh, greetings to your queen, and my prayers are continuing with you and to all of the family worldwide. Thank you. Same here, Doc. Same here. Uh-huh. All right, peace, Brother Dwayne. Thank you. We have some questions and comments from the chat room. I want to give a shout-out to... Um, the Truth Seeker, he gave the link to where you could find the 2.2 um, magnitude earthquake that hit in New York. It's at the USGS.com. It's an earthquake hazards program. So that's verification that there was two earthquakes. The other one they're not talking about on the, um, you know, further down south. 
also one question from the um, from the chat room. A brother wants to know um, why is he seeing these light orbs all of a sudden? Um, the light orbs are ancestors. Um, they are ones who have left their physical body, and the energy in which that comes out is electrons, in which that normally goes into an orb shape. Um, these are ancestors, so these are the ancestors in which that are floating around you. So whenever you see orbs, that's what they're symbolic to. Next question. So just stating that he sees them all the time, mostly at night, and he sees them all the time. Right. Well, those are answers. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then also purple ones and, you know, orange ones. Well, that's good. The um, purple ones are the more um, spiritual ancestors. Um, the orange ones are those who are more nurturing. Um, orange deals with nurturing vibration. Purple deals with royalty or um, higher spiritual mentalities or mind state. So they're just simply there in order to um, help you with your mission. You know what I'm saying? You have a purpose on planet Earth, and um, they're trying to make sure that you fulfill your purpose. Mm-hmm. All right, any more questions? All right, we're going to go back. Um, call us 0617. You're on the line. Call us 0617. Now, um, 904. You're on the line. Okay. Well, we're going to get back into the information. We know that all of this information is accumulating based on 2012. As much fictitious disinformation in which that is being put out through the CIA and through its agents, we have to know and realize that there is still a galactical alignment in which that is taking place, which is based on our ancestral information, which is based on our calendar. Regardless if they have read it right or wrong, it is still taking place. There is still a alignment in which that is going to take place. It's not just going to align our chakras, uh, which is our wheels of light, of color, light, color, and sound, thought, light, color, and sound, but they're going to align us in order to move beyond the third dimension frequency and hence above the slave mentality. See, a third dimensional being can be controlled by fourth dimensional entities. But when you reach the fifth dimension, there is no control by the fourth dimensional entities. So they see, they see that they're losing their, their, their grasp on humanity, all right, they no longer have their claws in humanity. We're getting ready to raise above them and above their mentality by becoming um, beings of energy. So by us developing our light energy body, all right, there's a, te- there's a technique called light energy body activation. Okay, um, this light body energy, this light energy body Activation is what we need to be focusing on because this is what is going to take us into the fifth dimension of fifth dimensional beings. Now, we spoke about normally about the 63637171 breath technique in which that does expand the auric fill from three feet outside of the um, outside of the physical body to more than 15 feet outside of the physical body. So it magnetizes, um, it removes leaks in the holes, it removes dis-ease, um, it strengthens our immune system, so forth and so on. Um, by doing this 100 times a day, these particular breath techniques, um, this is what you're doing with your auric field, expanding it and magnetizing You're going to need this, all right? Because as you heard by Michio Kakaku, um, the quantum physicist, astrophysicist, he spoke about the fact of these um, solar flares when they bombard the planet Earth, um, it disrupt the magnetic field. So that means that by you strengthening your magnetic field, it would be um, definitely um, necessary for you to do so, you know, um, the weight against any detrimental 
or any problems in which that could possibly occur. All right? Um, so um, definitely take that into consideration, um, you know, for your practices. Now, normally when we, you know, go through certain um, certain things, we always go back and look at the Santana calendar. In the Santana calendar, it speaks about St. Bartholomew Day, which was the great Sabbath and fire festival, in which that correlates to August the 24th, which, of course, is the day. But, um, you know, before any big festival, they always want some type of um, sacrifice. They didn't really get one yesterday, all right? So, you know, that's normally what they look for, you know. Um, we haven't um, heard any reports of of injuries, all right, just a lot of shaking around, you know, within the buildings, as the brother called in earlier, that type of thing. But as far as actual um you know, injuries as far as having to go to the hospital, you know, or, you know, deaths. We have not heard any reports of that. So, um, you know, uh, our powers obviously are working very well here on the East Coast. We just have to magnify it um, even more so so that none of these things can um, even um, come within our perimeter. You know, um, it seems like the East Coast is the place in which that is the hub of this information. Now it's spreading out through the Midwest, through the um, West Coast, all right? Um, but it's the East Coast in which that has these metaphysicians, um, these um, healers and different other things. It, they they are concentrated here on the West Coast, all right? So it is our duty as healers, as shamans, as um, practitioners, of the various African traditions, cultures, uh, religions, you know, as far as, you know, all of this, we need to be able to, um, we need to be able to use our powers in order to um, bring in justly the things in which that is going to occur upon planet Earth and which that will help our transition. You know what I'm saying? Not so much of just the disasters in which that can occur, which they will and have occurred, you know, um, but we have to use those powers, all right? Um, this is why Haiti was attacked. This is why um, New Orleans was attacked, was because these were hubs of African powers, African um, sciences and religions, all right? Um, before, you know, if you want to call it voodoo, or voodoo, if you want to call it um, um, hoodoo, you know, Santerian, uh, you know, uh, you know, um, part of the um, Congo rites, you know, mysteries of Paulo Mayombe, or whatever the case is. All of this information stems from Africa. You know, um, Africa is the source and hub of um, us learning the science of low magic and high magic in which that is called white and black magic, in which that when we mix them together, get gray magic, and um, this is what we need to be at. We need to be able to control things and being able to also not have to control things, but being able to control things at our will. Um, we all need to be um, at that point of power, all right, because the Illuminati right now has um, a lot of these mysteries in which that the majority of us are not privileged to, unless you go into these secret societies such as the Rosicrucians or the Shriners or the Masons, and you see from their rituals and ceremonies that this information is there, and you are able to pluck from that information and bring it back to the community. All right? Yes, please. We also have another question, too, from the chat room. The brother stated that he's having a lot of issues with his family because he won't say Jesus. So I was telling him that he should say to Jesus. We all know that Jesus Christ is symbolic to your Christ seed. I noticed that we had lost some colors after I said that. But if you are truly God and God is God body, then you should be able to be the magician in the room and control everything. Um, not saying Jesus and you know that they're programmed and that's the language that they speak, then how are you going to reach them? How would you speak to an Oriental person if you don't know Manchurian? You see, you have to come to someone with the language that they're on, and then you can control the energy and, you know, have them doing and saying what in higher vibrations. Then they'll hear you. So, like, when you're praying, you say, 
Amen. Hurrah. Everybody else has stopped saying, you know, they stop because they end their prayers with amen when you say ra. And then those who are sensitive enough to the energy, they'll be like, hmm, amen, ra. You see, it'll start connecting things. What do you think, God? Should they say Jesus? We can't hear you. Mm. Well, y'all know that this is metaphysics. All right, well, um, this is metaphysics. So when we talk about metaphysics, when we talk about metaphysics, um, you know, you have to be able to um, incorporate all religions and all ideologies. That's that's simple as it is. Now, Jesus, as we know, has come from two words, Greco-Roman words, in which that is Jew, which is short for Jupiter, and Zeus. Jesus, Jesus becomes Jesus. All right, and um, the deity in which that permeates the uh, Roman beliefs. Um, prior to the Roman Catholic Church was Jupiter, all right? Um, the one in which that was over the Greek or the Grecian belief system was Zeus. Well, when the Greco-Romans brought those kingdoms together and you went into the Vatican, um, started, you know, after 325 A.D. up under Constantine, they took and composed this creature, all right, in which that was from these two belief systems in which that became Jesus from Serapis, all right? Serapis was also at this which was also in his bull form, in which that was symbolic to Taurus being in the um, sun position, all right? So the sun was in that position um, 4,000 years ago, all right? 2,000 years ago, it moved from out of um, Taurus into um, Aries. Well, excuse me, 6,000 years ago, it moved from out of Taurus into 4,000 years ago into Aries. From 4,000 to 2,000 years ago, it was in Aries. So hence, 2,000 years ago, um, um, the sun was moved in from, you know, astrology from what we would call Aries, you know, which this is how Jesus become the lamb, you know, the lamb of God and so forth and so on. You got to get into astrological theo- um, astro theology in order to understand what is going on. Now, metaphysically also, um, we know that Jesus' name was is Ara- Aramaic, Old Hebrew, which is Yahshua. All right, now what's the sound in which that you make when you sneeze? Yashu. So regardless, the sound in which that you make when you sneeze is calling on the Aramaic name of what we refer to as Jesus. This is where they got that character from within the um, Aramaic and, and Hebrew was from that particular sound in which they be made when we sneeze. All right, when we sneeze, it's a known fact that your heart stopped beating, you know, for that instant. All right, if it's hard enough. Now, your heart makes the sound, Yahuwah, 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 which becomes the 100th attribute of Allah, you know, um, when you dicker or chant the name of Allah. So all the way from um, El Rahmanu to um, El Sabaru, um, El Sabaru um, you know, from all the way from the compassionate to the patient, when you say the 99 attributes of Allah, the 100th attribute is Yahuwah which becomes a Yahweh also. But that's the sound in which that your heart makes, your heartbeat, those four chambers of your heart. Those four chambers symbolize the four amino acids, which becomes the building blocks of your physical body. So this is all metaphysics, you know. So you can't say that you have a problem with Yahshua or, you know, which they took, which was symbolic to the breath of life within your physical body, and they anthropomorphized it into a character, a white character in that. That's what you despise is the white character, but you can't despise the component in which that makes that particular sound. You yourself make that sound when you sneeze. That is part of the breath of life. So you have to understand the difference between, um, you know, what your parents or the people are saying. You know what I'm saying? If they are calling on white Jesus, which is that um, mentality, then you can really cue that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not into white Jesus worshiping. I'll be the first one to bash it, all right? However, when it comes to Yahshua or Shu, which is the ancient comedic deity um, being inside of you, because Shu symbolizes the personification of air. It's the breath of life. Shu is where the name Yahshua within Arabic and Aramaic, um, well, excuse me, within Hebrew and Aramaic comes from, stems from, it derived from, is from the ancient Egyptian deity Shu. Because that's the sound that you make when you sneeze. 
So we have to understand that these are components of the physical body, things in which the physical body does, um, the attributes of the physical body and of the hormonal chemical bodies and the various bodies, um, the multidimensional bodies of the human body. All right? And you can't despise that. But you can't despise that image of the beast called white Jesus. You can't despise that. You can burn the hell up out of that image. As a matter of fact, you need to burn that from your mind as we speak. You need to burn that in from your mind. So if you need to make corrections to your mothers or to your fathers, then you make it on that particular correction. All right? You take them to Romans uh, where it speaks about the fact that he had hair like lamb's wool and there's only one people on the planet Earth who has hair like lamb's wool, that his feet was um, 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 bronze burnt in the furnace, in other words, black. But when you see the image of Shu, Shu has hair like lamb's wool and he's um, very dark skinned um, and he has feet in which that was burnt in the furnace. So all of this, um, this, this description of Shu is right there on the walls in the temples of um, ancient Kemet. All right, or Egypt as we now call it today. All right, so um, let's let's clear those things up. We're talking about a concept versus an anthropomorphized character. Don't get caught up into the character. Understand the concept. All right. Um, next um, question. One brother wanted to know since the MLK um, monument was put in D.C., did he bring the ancestors with him? <laughs> hmm, that's powerful um, association. Could be because um, that image of Martin Luther King. And a lot of people did not like it because of the fact that he looked closed off with his arm fo- with his arms folded. You know what I'm saying? Instead of open and embracing, he looked closed off. So um, we know that when a person, you know, fold their arms, you know, that, you know, normally they're against the message. You know, that's that's a subconscious type of um, way of looking at it. So this is the way in which they showed that monument when you look at it. His arms are folded. So hence he's closed off. So definitely that could be um, a case um, too, because um, I remember me and the sister was talking about that yesterday. Um, I think with my wife too, and that um, because of that, um, um, Martin Luther King was turning over in his grave. And I said, well, shit, there's a whole lot of things that Martin Luther King would be turning over his grave, and especially um, the fact that they only keep relegating him down to that 1963 speech. You know, because if you go through the last three years of his life. He became very revolutionary. He was even talking about black power and everything his last three years. Um, he was talking about, um, um, you know, the Viet Cong and that we should not go to Vietnam. So they despised that he didn't leave his, you know, lead his people into going to the Vietnam War. You know, also he's talking about the poor people campaign, how um, the waste of food by these corporations and these restaurants, you know, should be going towards the poor people. And he wanted to um, produce a, um, a um, poor people's campaign. So these are things in which that Martin Luther King was doing, and during this time period, you didn't see Andrew Jacks, um, Andrew um, um, Young, um, um, Andy Young, as he's called, or you know, uh, um, or any of these um, other people by his side. Maybe Jose Williams was still there, you know, because Jose Williams carried on the traditions of um, of um, passing food out, you know, um, um, yearly before he passed, you know. But other than that, um, all the other individuals um, left his side. You know, that was so caught up um, in, you know, in him, you know, who was so much, you know, part of that Boule um, system. Because Martin Luther King, actually, he re, um, reneged on that Boule shit the last three years of his life. And he was no longer looking um, um, into it um, from that position. So um, these are some things in which they have to go back and reanalyze, okay? Next question. Let me see. Um God, there was a question in reference to us being in the Aquarian age. Exactly what is the comedic um, correlation to the Aquarian age? And who will, be, who will we worship in the Aquarian age? That was a Hiru. two-part Hiru question. is the um, correlation to um, the Aquarian age, Hiru. Um, and we're going into the age of Hiru. Um, Hiru um, symbolizes the head of man. Whenever you go back to the Old Testament, um, in the book of Daniel and Ezekiel, I think it's in the book of Ezekiel where it speaks about I've seen the head of a man um, on the beast, and the head of the man uh, was that of a human head. Um, and so um, that is Heru. Then they said they've seen a calf or a bull. That is Taurus. When they said they see a lion, that is Leo. When they said they've seen an eagle, that is Scorpio. Scorpio has three symbols, um, the snake, the e- um, the snake, the scorpion, or the Scorpio, you know, and the eagle, you know. But the head is that of Aquarius, and Aquarius sits opposite side from the um, lion, 
which is Leo, in which that the opposite now of the Sphinx in the same alignment would be that of um, Heru, which would be um, Aquarius. So Heru is the um, actual alignment. So um, as we move into this age of Heru, uh, we become the heroes, as they would say. Um, I think, um, you know, um, Brother... Um, Man, what's the brother's name? I think um, his radio blog talk radio show is called Superheroes. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, so we're moving into that particular age right now as we speak and have, and most of us have moved into it if you're asking these type of conscious questions and so forth and so on. So um, that's what we're at right now. Of it was a two-part really, question, and the brother wanted to mm-hmm. know who should we worship. Um, Heru is nothing more than your higher self, which is your divine mind, which is God, your soul. So that's who you should worship, the God within. Remember, we just listened to the song um, Golden by Jill Scott, in which she said, I'm worshiping the God within. Well, that's who you need to be worshiping, the God within, the God within you, your Lord and personal Savior, as the Christians would say. That is your God. All right? That's why it's personal. All right, because it's in your um, the brother, the brother said that um the superhero radio that's brother um Zucatier I see it so shout out yes, to that's Harry. Brother Zucatier, I see it. Thank you. Exactly. Mhm. I don't know how to pronounce it. Okay, we have um huh? some more questions from some callers. Um, eighteen oh nine ending in eighteen oh nine. Peace, peace. How y'all doing? Peace, Elaine. Peace. All right, God. <laughs> Right, uh, um, yes, I was looking at a little something that Cracker uh, took and broke down. Um, I forgot the guy name who discovered uh, Elenin. Uh, I think it was right. a Russian scientist, mm-hmm. a Russian astronomer. Mm-hmm. Right, and he broke the name. Well, his name is Elenin, that's his last name. Mm-hmm. Right, and he, and he broke his whole name down, the guy's first and last name into acronyms. Uh, right, Leonad, Leonad um, Elenin, right. Right, right, right. And, and I, I thought maybe you had a little bit more on that because it was very interesting that he broke He broke actually uh, well, the Leonad first and last name the, um, the meteor shower, the Leonad meteor showers take place every um, year, it seems like, around um, October, November time. Um, I know it takes, I know it's, um, you know, for several years that um, Leonad um, meteorite showers takes place. So, you know, um, you know, based on that correlation of his first name, Leonad, you know, um, we can definitely see um, that it was based on the media showers, you know. Um, so as far as anything else, I haven't done any more research on that besides for his first name being connected to the media right showers on which that takes place normally around November. Yeah, 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 yeah. He also broke down the word Ellen and also the E, the L, you know, just breaking it down. I, I, mm-hmm. damn, I, I got the guy's uh, name, but yeah, right. uh, crack it down, we broke, broke it down and whatnot. I thought it was interesting, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, it sounds yeah. interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, 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 I thought it was uh, very interesting. But, um, um, so where you, you found that at? Was it on YouTube? Yeah, yep, yep. I was looking at it a little earlier today, yep, showing up on, uh, okay. on, on YouTube. And, uh, okay. um, to everybody, make, um, those who are interested noted it, um, um, checking out what the brother is talking about. Go to YouTube, and I guess put in um, put in um, Ellen in, um, you know, what you said name breakdown. Possibly it can um, pop up. Yeah, the guy was breaking down twenty uh, twenty twelve. Um, let me see. Uh, shut. Uh, uh, yeah, it says bro, uh, twenty twelve. Uh, uh, the truth uh, not being told. Uh, shit, what's the guy's name here? Um, uh, uh, I think Alex Alex Richbrook, whatever the, whatever it is, yeah. But he breaks down the uh, name name of of the guy uh, and everything. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, whole John the chat room for y'all and everything. And, uh, yeah, please. That's what's up. Please, you got yeah. the chat room laughing about you calling him a cracker too. So. Yeah, we know. Yeah. I keep it funky. You know what I'm saying? Mom told me keep it funky. Don't tell a lie. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the chat room in a minute, man. And maybe you can um check it out or whatever, and 
and uh, give us a little elaboration on the next time, or whatever. But we go off. All right, yeah. all right. And um, you said his name was um, the lies. You said lies that we you said, um things and we said we're not being told about Ellen. Oh, says yeah. It, it said. Uh, let me see. It said twenty twelve. Um, the truth you're not being told. The clock runs out. Um, uh, uh September twenty fifth, twenty eleven. That's oh, the whole whole yeah. Time. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I'll just get this uh, straight here now. But um, yeah, that, I thought maybe you uh, because it, it was interesting how he just broke down the guy's whole name, and you know he uh, but of course he broke down NASA, saying how NASA was uh was nothing but the you know the German motherfuckers uh that was making those uh from from Nazi Nazi German motherfuckers. That's all NASA was. Uh, it wasn't a government agency. It was actually a privately owned uh, a deal. Right, right, got you. Well, that's just like the CIA as well as also NASA, right, exactly. That is all, um, That is all, you know, quote, unquote, you know, as we would say, um, um, the CIA, you know, uh, slash, you know, Nazi, you know what I'm saying? That's, um matter of fact, when the Nazis, um, after 1945, the Nazis were brought over here to the United States, and those are the two agencies in which they form um, by the 1950s with NASA um, as well as also... Um, the CIA. Mm-hmm. That was part of what is called, um, um, man, what's the name of that project? They call it Project. Um, well, from out of there, you got in the, in the, um, the CIA, you got the, um, later on the testing called Project um, Delta and Project. Um, can't remember the other one, but it was called Project Delta. In which that they use um, experiment drugs and different things on the people, you know, um, from out of the CIA based on that information. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause it was funny how they just shut the joint down, right? <laughs> right. They just shut that joint straight down. It was like, yeah, now there's no more needed no longer. Like, wait a second, you know what I mean? <laughs> now right. no longer needed. That's great. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, but um, yeah, check check that zone out. Maybe you know we can um chop it up about that a little later on that. But uh, that's that's all basically. I had, uh, but oh, another, another thing. So you say you think Ellen, the so-called Ellen, is the uh, mothership? Is, is that is? Um, this is what it says. Is um um could be the mothership, New Biddle, you know, so forth and so on. Um, you know, um, it's something to definitely you know check out, do our own research on. You know, there's a lot of this information in which that is out right now. So, you know, of course, once again, you know, I wouldn't recommend, you know, us jumping to the, um, you know, to that conclusion. You know what I'm saying? Because they were saying the same thing about Hellbop when it came through. You know, right, it was right. a UFO that was behind Hellbop. You know, um, I remember that because that was in 1995, 96. You know, when all that was taking place. And I remember living in Atlanta, Georgia at that time period. But um. You know, yeah, no, no doubt. You know, it could definitely um, be, you know, they got um, the comment on um, and you know, New Vidal, Post Shift 2011. They got all types of information um, online right now, you know, on the, um, that's YouTube. That's what's up. Well, I, well, I ain't, I ain't going to take no more time, my brother. I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? Much respect to you. Keep it going, brother. And, um, you know, you the truth. So keep it going, bro. Oh, appreciate that, Doc. Thank you. All right. Peace. Peace. Um, caller ending in three four seven seven. On the line. Peace. While they're taking their phone off mute, um, it says, "Can you talk about the space telescope, Kepler?" Well, the space telescope, Kepler, is just used in order to. Um, because supposedly the Hubble telescope was shut down for a time period, and so the Kepler telescope was just used in order to um, help with um, with um, that while it was being down. Um, the well, Vatican, even, even more important, yes, thank you, even more important is the telescope in which that the Vatican has. Um, you know, because the Vatican are the ones in which that is saying that Elena could possibly be the wormwood in which that is mentioned in the book of Revelation. Of course, they was expecting this to be, um, you know, um, in 1995, they were expecting that to have been, you know, um, 
you know, um, the hell bop comment, you know, you know, so that wasn't per se, you know, that didn't pan out too well. So now they're saying that the comment element um, is the one would, based on the conjunction with the astrological alignments and the calendar of the Omex Mayan calendar, you know, but we'll see, you know, you know, because, um, like I said, there's a lot of disinformation out here. But I know when we got into Williams Cooper's book, you see what happened. Y'all couldn't even hear me online. We was out for about five to ten minutes. You know. Didn't they kill so, him too? Yeah, they killed William Bill Cooper um, right after nine one one in November of um, two thousand and one. Um, they claim that they um here they are rolling up to this house at two thirty in the morning talking about they trying to serve him a warrant. And then supposedly a shootout ensued in which that he, um, William Cooper got killed in the process, but of course he um killed and injured um two officers um in the process too, um according to the reports. So he didn't go down um by himself. You know, so that's why I'm saying if um we take it back to what Bill Cooper is saying, um we might definitely have more truth you know, then a lot of the um, misinformation on which that is out there because this information comes from him being a naval intelligence um, operator, you know, so definitely. And plus he already revealed that um, the 911 was an inside job and um, that it was coming. So he said this years ago, you know, year, you know, um, months before it even took place, he already knew about it and was already telling the people. So obviously they didn't like him still telling the people um, afterwards, um, after the 911. Remember, they was trying to sell everybody. So if you notice, during that time period of George Bush getting into office from 2000 all the way until 2008, for the eight years in which that he served, it seemed as if there was a hit list on our most popular um, lecturers and teachers, all right, Dr. Um, um, I can tell you names off the top of my head who died between the time of 2000 and, um, 2000 and 2008 or who that either got put in jail, you know what I'm saying? Dr. Malachi York got put in jail, you know, um, around 2001, 2000, well, 2002, a year later after the 911, you know, less than a year later after 911, they put him in jail. Um, they killed William Bill Cooper in two, November 2001, all right, around the same time period of, um, Dr. Khalid um, dies, you know what I'm saying, he's poison. Um, Jamil Alamine, um, he get captured and he goes to jail, all right, who is known as Ralph H. Brown, uh, Rap H. Brown. Um, um, Brother Dell Jones dies. Um, Ishimusha Bereshengo dies. Jacob Carruthers dies. My teacher, Prince Ramesses Abel Bay, he dies, you know. Um, you know, and so it just seemed that, a lot of um, people, you know what I'm saying, even um, during that time period of 2000, 2008, um, you know, it was a lot of people in which that passed on, you know, during that time period, you know, or went to jail or whatever case is. Yahweh Ben Yahweh, you know, uh, you know, he dies less than, you know, just months being released from jail after 10 years, and he dies. I mean, so there's a lot of things in which that took place and went on, you know. I mean, so we lost a lot of great ones um, during um, that eight-year span or during the time when Bush was in office, you know. Um, and some can say either through ignorance or either through conspiracy, we can see what actually took place. You know, if you're ignorant of it, then, of course, you can't acknowledge it. But when you look at the conspiracy factor of it and um, those who would be speaking out about the 9-11, um, after that, you know what I'm saying, those individuals are no longer here, you know, or either they're locked under the jail, you know, like Dr. York is, you know. So these are the things that we have to look at um, right now. Are there any more questions? Well, God, um, there were some comments in the chat room while you were building so eloquently. Mm -hmm. um, one sister, um, shout out to Nefertiti, she stated that he also, um, Bill Cooper, spoke out about the Iraqi war, 
you know, so he right. gave the heads up to everybody about that. Then also right. Rich Cannon, he also wanted to make sure that you added Dr. Amos Wilson and how, you know, they yes. took him out too, Blue Prince and Black Wilson, Power. Right, Dr. Amos Wilson, yes, they um knocked, knocked him out. Dr. Amos Wilson, they um a brain hemorrhaging, the same as Johnny Cochran, a brain hemorrhaging, the same as Bobby Wright, a brain hemorrhaging, um, or what they refer to it as. So all of these individuals died of brain hemorrhaging. Dr. Um, Dr. Um, um, Khalid Muhammad supposedly died of a brain hemorrhage. Supposedly these are all supposedly from strokes and high blood pressure and so forth and so on. But they all died in that same manner of um, a brain hemorrhaging. So definitely, you know, so this, these are no coincidences. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Any more? I'll, you have um, You have some questions from callers. Caller ending in zero four nine eight. Also, too, God, remember on the um, the older Planet of the Apes because there's three of them. So the the one in the middle, remember they put in that the monkey who traded on them to go with the humans. Remember they put the new Wapian flag in her hand. Oh yeah, well yeah, well that's the movie that came out. That was the first one, the movie that came out. We're not talking about the series, but we're talking about the first um, Planet of the Apes movie, um, in which that came out. The flag of the Mahati was in. That um, was imprinted on the ape's hand, which was the crescent um, moon and the spear. All right, that was no coincidence. Now that movie came out um, 2001. By 2002, based on that on that movie, we should have known that they was going after Doctor York because that movie mm. came out in 2001. So, you know, if we was looking at, if we was so metaphysical and we were looking at the signs, when we seen that imprint of the Mahadi flag um, um, symbols in the ape's um, hand, that should have gave us a warning that they was going after him. And that's when we should have de- definitely took him underground in order to protect him. Okay? So, you know, this is why we got to learn how to start reading signs, because this was in the movie months before... Um, this happened. So go back and watch the Planet of the Apes, and you will see the crescent moon and the spear of the Mahati um, in the hand. Now that means they was going directly after him because that is the flag that he flew as us being Ansars, Nubian, Nubian Islamic Hebrews in the 80s and 90s. Okay? So go back and check it out. Y'all see it. All right, next question. Caller ended in 0498. You have a comment, question? Yes, um, I have a comment and a question. I have uh, at least three things I'd like to uh, point out. Uh, first right. of all, I would like to uh, say that you all are doing an excellent job, um, Brother Aleem and your uh, lovely companion. Um, Thank you. First thing I wanted to comment on was the uh, earthquake that occurred. Um, I live in PG County, which is very close to D.C. I could walk to the White House if I want. And right. um, it was kind of crazy here. And um, the way, <laughs> you know, I'm used to seeing trees move, cars move, you know, but when you see your house moving, you know, it's really um, amazing. Um, I was in, de- in denial about what was occurring, but then when I heard glass crashing to the floor, I ran out of the house. And um, it just occurred to me what I was looking at was a frequency change. That's why it looked liquid. It's like holding up that number two pencil between your thumb and your index finger and you wave it and it starts to look rubbery. Right. That's basically what you're looking at. And um, so after the earthquake, I, I ran down the street to um, my son's house and his wife and uh, his four-year-old were home. And um, they were okay. And um, his wife was, um, uh, we were both trying to calm down and um, his wife asked me, um, let me tell you what the, the baby has been saying Like There's a four-year-old daughter that they have. So she took me outside because she didn't want to get the uh, little girl worked up over what she was about to say, you know, reiterate what she was talking about. But she said the, um, the four-year-old had um, been telling her that she didn't want to lose her toys. She didn't want the house to burn up. And the mother asked her, well, what, are you, what are you talking about? And the four-year-old said, well, that... The houses are on fire. There was a fireball. And when you're that young, you're still walking between two worlds, spirit and three-dimensional. So time for a child is, you know, kind of irrelevant because they don't know what a concept of time is. 
Right. But she did say the houses. They're bringing everything into the consciousness, right? They're bringing the things from the subconscious plane to the conscious realm. Mm -hmm. Right. They have that ability, yes. Yeah, but they don't let her watch any, you know, like Discovery Channel where they're talking about the comet or any kind of destruction. Right. Uh, She either reads books or watches um, the children's programming. So um, that's why I'm thinking that she has not been influenced by anything like this. So she's between those two worlds, spirit and and the dimension we live in now. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I don't take lightly what comes out of the mouth of babes when they speak like that. So um, And then the... Yeah, so the third and last thing I wanted to ask you about was you were saying about activating your your, uh, light body energy with deep breathing. And um, just lately I've been having a problem with uh, staying um, clear. I'm trying to avoid using nasal sprays. It's been like almost every night. Right, well, you you need to get um, peppermint oil pills or um, peppermint oil um uh-huh. you know, rub it underneath your um your lip for your nose as well as also take the peppermint oil capsules, I should say. Um okay. and take them and they'll open up your lungs, your whole respiratory system. And so for those people who have bronchitis or asthma, who have problems breathing, um that the peppermint oil will open those areas up so that you can deep breathe, so that you can do the breathing exercises. So make sure you get some Peppermint oil capsules. Okay, and, and, and should we be too, spending Robert, a certain amount of time out, out out in the sun? With well, you know, with they're talking about these coronal mass ejections that are you know bombarding the earth. So right. should well, we the all mass be increasing? Well, the corona mass ejections, or which it is bombarding the earth, the solar flares that is hitting the planet Earth, will help us to make the transition. That's why they're. That's why the ozone layer. Um, it has dissipated, has dissipated okay. was because in, in the 1970s, what was going on was that we was coming back into knowledge itself. That's why we started growing our hair natural. Once again, we started taking pride into ourselves. We started saying black power, black pride, black businesses, black people. We started loving ourselves. So they claimed that from us, you know, putting so much aerosol can spray into our hair is that the can spray called monofluorocarbons is what caused the dissipation wow. of the ozone layer. Now, we know that this was bullshit. However, however, um, what was really causing the dissipation of the ozone layer was the solar winds, the sun. Oh. The sun winds okay. was destroying the ozone layer so that we can receive this energy from this galactic alignment, which is based on the um, Omec Mayan prophecies, for the first time in 25,000 years. So right now, um, the, according to the um, Nation of Gods and Earths, according to the Nation of Islam, we're going to what is called a renewal of history. It's called a Holy Quran, which is a sun cycle. So the sun has now recycled itself to a new 25,000-year period called a great year, in which that we will receive the energy from Alcyon for the first time in 25,000 years, in which that will help help with our transform, um, transmutation um, from the third dimension into the fifth dimension. Okay, but for, you know, a lot of us, well, I don't any longer since I'm retired, but a lot of people spend a lot of time in the office under, you know, that fluorescent lighting. So right, should right. we be spending more time outside yeah, or how much, how much time do yeah. you yeah. think? We need, we need, we need um, an hour of sunlight a day is melanated people, an hour. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. I, hey, I feel like my IQ has just gone up five points. No, you Thank won't. you. <laughs> All right. Okay. Baby, did you um did you want to build on something um on that you was talking? Did you want to well also further? too, God? You know, um, sometimes your nostril will clog up the left or the right because that's your body's way of balancing itself. And there's a breathing um, meditation that we always do where we cover up the left nostril, breathing in the right, and then alternating. You know, so if you naturally would do it, it will um help to um balance both hemispheres of the brain. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to say that. I also just want to right, give love to that baby because that is the alternating nostril breath technique that that my wife is referring to. My goddess is referring to the alternating nostril breath technique. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you. You're welcome. No doubt, goddess. 
also, too, for the baby to say that, you know, the, um, she didn't want to lose her toys and stuff like that, you know. Um, right, because of the earth. <sighs> we need a lot of candles for that situation. Well, that situation is talking about the solar flare activity. Because right now we're going through massive solar flares. And if you would see the actual video of um, the Akashio, um Kaku, um, of this quantum physicist, it shows massive radiation or sun plasma bombarding um, the planet Earth from the sun. So hence it's burning the planet. Uh, which will actually burn out the electrical equipment, the electronic system, the technology, all of that is going to be fried. Um, you know, and this is what is going on. This is why the transformers are being blown. This is why the cell phones are going out. People have to replace the batteries. Um, why, they're ba- why the um, computers um, are going out, laptops, they're not able to um, recharge themselves or charge themselves even with the cords. All of these things are having technical difficulties as far as the electronics are concerned, technology is concerned, because of the solar flare, solar flare activity. And this is all mentioned within Malachi, the fourth chapter, the second verse, where it says the sun of righteousness will come with healing in its wings and that the sun will burn as an oven and will leave no root branch but stubble. And it's talking about um, those who do wicked. They would, they would, they would leave nothing but... Um, no branch, no stubble. In other words, they would not be able to progenerate. They would not be able to um, um, have children. And we know that the only people on the planet Earth who is having problems reproducing are uh, um, naturally, you know, I'm not talking about artificially now, we're talking about naturally or Albion's Europeans. As the brother says, crackers. They are having problems doing that. You know, um, you know, um, their birth rate has, on a scale of one in ten, has increased to um, less than one percent. So this is what we're talking about. You know, they're the ones in which that is not having no root branch but stubble. You know, um, because they're the ones in which they um, have done this, these um, wicked um, things upon the planet. You know, as far as um, trying to. Um, control the original people's mind state, produce this racism, produce this sexism, produce this mentality that they are superior when actually they are inferior, you know, um, based on genetics, you know, and then um, genetically try to destroy the people who are the original people here, you know, through their genetically modified organisms or genetically altered food, frankenfoods. You know, through the um, poisons um, in water, through the aspartame and fluoride, you know, in the products, through all of these things. You know, they're the ones in which they're doing all of this, and these are the ones in which that nature is going to focus on and, and shake them off just like a dog shaking fleas off his back. Yeah. All right, are there any okay. more questions? Um, caller ending in two six. Two zero. Do you have a comment? Have a question? Okay, I don't think they're ready. No, right. God, that's it. All right. Well, um, we enjoyed y'all, and um, hopefully, y'all enjoyed this segment of our um, radio show, Dr. Eileen Bay Show, um, and my co-host. Um, you know what, you have you have a whole bunch of people who just threw their hands up. Do you feel like oh, adding on? You got like go. 40 more minutes. <laughs> All right, well, I was trying to get off, you but gotta, let's go, Joel. <laughs> okay, caller 7828, 7828. Peace, King and Queen. Peace, God. Peace. You know what, I thought I pressed one. I didn't. I, didn't, I, I thought I was already on the um, host queue. Um, I just got two no, comments. Got um, hello? Yes, we did. Yeah, I got two comments. One to clarify what the other brother was wanted to, um, wanted you to stipulate the element thing. It's mm-hmm. um, extinction level event near impact Nibiru. That's the um, that's the name the of breakdown of correct. And it's uh, he was right about Alex um, Retrov. He's a um, he's a uh, foreigner. Uh, A L E X 
Alex, and then Retrov, R-E-T-R-O-V. And actually, the um, the Caucasian gave out a couple of dates. He said August the 17th, which he was only a few days off because it happened August right. the, um, the 23rd. Right, 23rd. He said right. another date was October, well, September the 26th. That'll be the next one. He said October 17th, October, well, then he says November the 2nd, the 7th, the 11th, and the 12th. He said the 12th should be the last one. That's when they're on the tail end of it. Right. And, and uh, that's for, as far as for this year. And to um, piggyback off what you were talking about as far as um, President Reagan in the 80s. Right. It seems like they are they they trying to do that retro thing. They trying to bring everything back to the '80s because uh, right. um, I was um, watching CNN and this joke um, came on Paul Krogman and he talks about an alien attack. You know, they ain't nothing but the um, Project Blue Beam. But he talks about right. how yeah. an alien attack could save the economy. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. They all they're trying to do is just put it put it. Yeah, yeah. You can check it out. Right. It's on CNN. You can put his name in Paul Krogman. And just just uh, put it in um, on YouTube, and he talks about oh, it's okay, only about like a minute or two. Right, spell that last um, spell um, Cre- that last uh, name. Hold on, K R U. Okay, get the YouTube and um, we can pull that up, right? Okay. Yeah, 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 you can just play it right now. Paul Craigman, K R U, G R U, G G M A N. I think that's what it might be an M. It's something like about a minute or two long. They talk and, about um, how. And who show is he on? Was he? Um, I think I believe it was CNN. Hold up, let's see if I still got it logged. No, I don't have it logged in. I think I believe it was like CNN. But you can just Google. Um, just just put it in like one of the little search. Just put his name in and put um. This this is what I typed up. Um, alien attack. Might save economy, and it just popped up. He just popped up. It was about a, um, a couple of days ago. <laughs> so who are they saying are the aliens? Us? Well, so they say that you um, already the connect. You know the aliens. No, he actually he never know. stipulated. He never stipulated who were the aliens. He said it could if we did have an attack. That's the same uh, um, situation of uh, um, when Ronald Reagan. Was talking when he came on. It's like in the '80s when he said um, right. that that could bring us together. It's the same scenario. Right. Well, I know they call us the aliens. They do. Right. They said right. that the aliens right. built the pyramids. So I think what they're saying in code is that when we wake up, that's what'll help the economy. Yeah, because you already know what's good, the- what's good for them is bad for us. What's bad for for us is good for them. So it's always the opposite. Yeah, that's true. And it's another website you can go to. It's called rabbithole2.com, and it talks about all the element stuff. Robert, Rabbit Hole 2. You know, you got to dissect it, you know, because there's a lot of, of misinformation, course. too. But it's a lot of good stuff on right. the channel, too, though. Right. Yeah. Did, did you get the clip? Yep, I got it. All right, you can play it. Peace, brother. Yeah, I'm you know what I'm saying? Peace. Just do your thing, man. Thanks, Zach. Uh, all right, peace. All right. Any other questions before we get to this? Any other questions? Yeah, you have two more Right. Um, let me see here. We're gonna go back to the radio lines. All right, call the nineteen oh nine, you're on the line. Nineteen oh nine. You're on the line. All right. We go to thirty four seventy seven. Ended in 3477, you're on the line. 3477, you're on the line. Peace. Peace. 
baby. They tend to the baby. Call is 0596. You're on the line. You got a question or comment? Is uh, this 804? Yep, that's you. Peace, peace, Dr. Lean. Peace. Peace. Um, look, my focus is um, that flood, um, the Mississippi River, uh, the Missouri right. River. And right. you know they're holding back water. Uh, 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 the state of Montana, they got dams up there. Uh, the Dakotas, they got dams. Uh, Iowa, it's about, it's about six or seven dams where they're holding back water, waiting to be released. Right. Now, now we already have over 100,000 acres of flooded land already. Water mm-hmm. sitting on that land, marinating itself, softening the earth. And and uh, my take, you know, are you been focusing on that? Well, I can tell you what, um, brother, that you mention it, um, we can talk about that right now. As a matter of fact, but because that's my main. Know, mm-hmm, well, well, talk about it I, because the people need to know what's going on in the various areas. This is why we do this blog talk radio show. There's things in which that I don't, that I might, I might not know of, in which that can be elaborated on by others within those particular areas of territories. So please speak on it because we need to know the information. This is what they do in there. This is their biggest, biggest ultimate sacrifice here. Now, you know we got all the uh, nuclear uh, power plants on the East Coast. You got you. And, and see, they're getting ready to do something very, very exotic. They're going to do some underground uh, 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 explosives. When they release this water, they talking about uh, splitting, splitting the uh, the country right there where that where that uh, New Madrid fog line is. That's where all that water at, sitting on that fog line. And um, the dude was saying when they release all this water and and uh, release these these uh, uh, exotic uh, 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 bombs, you know. A uh, hundred feet under the ground, or about uh, four, five miles, you know, deep under the earth. That they're gonna loosen all of that earth, and when they release right. that water, all that water, and that earth gonna gonna drain itself on down into the Gulf. Well, that could be because the part of the Titanic plate or the Titanic weaponry, in which that was used yesterday, was to probably yeah. possibly to move exactly. some of that in order exactly. to um, go into what you were talking about. You know, because we know that they have been using bombs which that go further than a um, mile down into the planet Earth in order to set off, you know, earthquakes and to move, um, you know, these plates and shift these plates around. You know, so, you know, what you're talking about definitely correlates. So if you want to expand on um, how intense that would be, you're talking about the nuclear plants, you're talking about um, this is this is where they will, um, what what you think they're trying to do? What they're trying to do is, this is their ultimate eugenics plan. Uh, 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 they uh, see with all that earth that's going to be moving with this water that they're going to be releasing from these uh, uh, five or six dams, going to carry all that earth on down into the Gulf. Now, they already destroyed the uh, uh, low screen down in the Gulf with their oil and stuff. That's why we have all these. Uh, 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 um, uh, um, you know, um, uh, days without rain. Uh, I, I, I think it's Oklahoma. They done had some like fifty some days back to back to back with heat, and you know, no rain, and and and, and uh, all this crazy weather is coming from they destroy that uh, low screen golf because they said that golf goes up, goes up. You know, ran. Ran on up to the uh, uh, east coast and uh, you know out into the ocean. We don't, you know, just like when you let your windows down, you get a, uh, um, you know, a screen. Like if you let the front window down and the back window down, you get a you get a screen going through the car. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. So, so but but with this with this with this uh, 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 Missouri rubber and uh, uh, Mississippi River, they loosened up all the surface uh, uh, earth. 
Because, you know, because the water sitting on that earth and it's been sitting there what, for about four months now. So all that, you know, everything getting soggy. And see, they not, they not uh, digging, you know, like vertically down in the ground. It's like on a, on a, a degree. And so when they yeah. let them, and see, and see another thing, Dr. Ali, see, they waiting for some type of um, alignment, you know, to release this water because uh, it got something to do with the celestial alignment, you know, maybe, maybe when this comet comes through. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Right, right. And look, right? Another thing. Have you heard of um, black sand? Black sand. Yes. Uh, outside of Joe's song, no. <laughs> well, well, uh, this part of this this uh, biological weapons where they're gonna be using. Uh, 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 see all these smokestacks they got up. Man, right. they don't close down all the industries, but they never tore down these smokestacks. See, that's where they're gonna release these biological. And we could be wondering where it's coming from. It could be coming from these smokestacks. Now, right here in Richmond, where I'm at, we got about five smokestacks. Now, that's some you should network on, see which metropolitan cities got, got these smokestacks still up. You know? We got you. And another thing I'd like for you to do. So, so you uh, in Richmond? Yes, I'm in Richmond. All right. So what, what happened oh, from your experience yesterday? Oh, well, I thought it was a a, a, a semi-truck causing a little confusion. Because you know how them, them semi-trucks will come up the street and, 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 like, shake, shake you know, shake the, uh, you know, shake different things? Mm-hmm. That's what it felt like to me, you know. It felt like a, a, a semi-truck or a bulldozer or something coming up the street, you know. You know? It was It was real strange. Now, see, that was deep what you added on, brother, because, see, we didn't know that perspective of things. And I know with Katrina, that water had been sitting. And y'all know still water is deadly water. And they had all yeah. the dead caucuses in that water. And it was, and some people we've even met that are um, no longer in Louisiana. They were in North Carolina when we met them. And they had, you know, got into the water to go get their children from daycare. And they have fungus growing on their feet. Wherever the water touched, they had this fungus. You know, and then also, too, they broke the levees, which made the city flood even more. And, you see, and, so. and, and you're right, so the, and see, and they, they, they bagged them people not to do this. They bagged them, and they still blew them up. Mm-hmm. But this is their ultimate sacrifice. It seemed like they saving all of these calamities all in one shebang. They're going to give it to us all in one bang. But our best defense is is the combat fear. If that fear overrun you, then you're gonna lose everything that's granted to us. Everything, everything that's granted to us is gonna be thrown down the drain because of fear. But you know, I didn't even feel fear. You know, when I was hearing that, you know, I didn't feel nothing. You know. And a couple of things fell off the shelf and everything. So I was just, you know, just standing there, you know, what the hell is going on? Right. Well, I can tell you what, what? happened with me. I was sitting here on the phone um, in front of the computer like I am right now doing some work. And I'm looking up some information, actually preparing for the show, and I was talking to a sister on the other line from New York. And um, she was asking me questions, and I was like, um, since I got to call you back because we have an earthquake. <laughs> and yeah. so me and my wife go run, you know, we go running outside. And by the time we get outside, now the whole inside was shaking. So we felt the energy or the pressure come from underground. But when we get outside, the earth wasn't moving. And so we yelled over to the next door neighbors and saying that, you know, the same thing happened with them, that the inside the house was shaking. But when they came outside, everything was straight. So I know that the people who was outside, they didn't really feel anything. And, um, you know, here in this area, even though I've seen um, in other areas, they've seen the buildings moving and so forth and so on, shaking and certain things shaking and so forth and so on outside. But here it wasn't to that magnitude. 
You know, it's just like what you were saying. Um, you know, like I know the difference between I I know the difference um between um like a sonic boom and um you know and you know airplanes flying over. You know, and that's what you know, that's what um one of the neighbors was thinking that it was. I said, No, this was an earthquake. You know, this was something that came from under the ground, not from above. I know the difference. You know, so this is what we was trying to explain. And then, of course, by the time we came back in, we looked up the news, and, of course, that's what they were saying on the news, you know. So we definitely knew that we had to, um, you know, tap into this. But thank you, Wack, and uh, we're going to definitely do more investigation on that and keep that in mind. Because, see, what, what really frightened me is all these, you know, radiation plants that they got. You know, if this don't get you, that going to get you. But, right. you know, but, but, you know, peace out, you know. But focus in on that and, and uh, give us a brief on, you know, the water and everything. It's that All right, water. Will, brother. Thank you. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Peace. Paula ending in 9213. You're on the line? Yeah, peace, peace, peace. Yeah, peace. <clears throat> um, last week, a caller ask you a question about when the Kumin was rising and she would start to um uh shake or nod and you were mm-hmm. telling her that was the Kumin rising coming up through right, the memory. Symptoms. And I told her to write to go to the signs and symptoms of the Kuntalini and she would see the various symptoms on which that occurred from the Kuntalini. Right. Yeah, so what is that memory that, that you were talking about that it was going through? The memory is encoded within the water, being that you're 75% water, water carries memory. And so, of course, um, that is transferred into your DNA, um, through your blood, through your cells. Um, you know, um, the hub of memory is within your medulla oblongata, which is at the back of the head. That's where memory is stored at. And then from that storage place, it is released throughout the 76, uh, 76 trillion cells in your body. hmm and when it's released, does it act like 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 energy is going down through the body? Like like um, with it can me, what if bring, It can if you're bringing energy down um, from the cosmos. If you're bringing energy up from the kundalini, then it will go up the spinal column. So it will feel like um, sensations going up the spine or chills, as they would say, going up the spine. That would be the activation of your Ida Bengala and your Shushuna, so that the um, so that the kundalini can move through the hollow. Um, area in the spinal column, so that's what that would feel like. Yeah, cause on cause on the energy coming in, it it seems like I was like shaking. I was like, it's, it's, it's like my nervous system was like, sh- I was like shaking, like, and I felt like the the my my nerves was going down my body and stuff, and it was like it was like it was cleaning me out. You know what I mean? Right. Well, I mean, um, the energy coming down um, can be powerful, especially now being that there's more energy coming into the atmosphere, you know. So, of course, um, that can definitely happen because there's so much energy moving in now um, based on these solar flag activities um, that is taking place. But all of it in the end is going to be good for the changing and the transmutation of our DNA in order to transmute us from a third-dimensional state to a fifth-dimensional state. Right. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Peace. All right. Um, We're going to get into um, some more clips here. Um, The brothers has provided us. There's another question. One last one. Caller ended in 000. Caller ended in 000. New York. New York. You're on the line. Ah, man. I'm from Indianapolis. Oh, okay. Indianapolis. Excuse me. All right. Uh, basically, I had a couple comments, man. I don't know if you know this. Uh, I called in a couple weeks ago when you was talking about uh, the indigenous, how we black people were here in America before, you know, Columbus arrived, and I touched on the subject of Eleanor. But I wanted to say something about the old man calendar. You know what I mean? Uh, we based the, the date 2012 off the Julian calendar, but most people don't understand the minds were, or the old man's were smarter than the people who created the Julian calendar because they incorporated zero into the calendar. Well, if you look back at 1 B.C., it goes from 1 B.C. 
straight to 180. So when you talk about 2012 and the shift in consciousness, our calendar is actually a year off. And the funny thing is, <clears throat> I've done studies and, you know I mean, I've looked into this. The Mayan calendar, the Omega calendar, actually ends October 28th of 2011, you know. And that's when, the, uh, I guess, the way it was explained to me is the final ninth wave is supposed to take place. Right. And really, but that's what we may mention of the fact that Ellen is supposed to come around that same time as October the 16th, which would yeah. be simply um, 12 days prior to um, the ending of that particular calendar date. But, of course, you know, that's what we were saying is that regardless of what they claim or when it's supposed to have happened, if it's going to be 2012 or 2011, we know that it is happening. We know that there is still going to be a galactic alignment, and regardless of that, they can't stop that, no matter what type of technology that they have, period. Yeah, and that was a, that was the second thing I was going to get into. It was my personal belief. I was in the military. You know, I had a top-secret clinic and everything. I can't get into everything, but I do know this. Whatever is happening is they're preparing for what's coming because they can't do anything about it, and their goal is to take hostile, have a hostile takeover after this event happens. You know what I'm saying? It's the new world order. It's not having anything to do with this world. I feel like they're waiting to this. Just like my the last couple callers said, he said he's they wait until all these dates line up to release all this shit at once. Excuse my language, but if you no, look at the past year, yeah, if you look at the past year, all the volcanoes, all these earthquakes, why in 2011? Well, it makes sense that the Mayan, well, the Omen calendar ends this year for all exactly. these upticks. So it makes sense for all the government spending and everything. They're trying to prepare for the New World Order to come after we turn into to basically God, turn into who we really are. You know what I mean? They feel like they're going to try to take control of whoever's left, but I doubt that it goes like that. Exactly. I doubt it too, brother, because I ain't preparing for that. <laughs> I'm paying for um superhero or uh, hero a uh, mizzle. <laughs> I hear you shoot boy too, brother. That that's that's really all I wanted to say, man. Just like I said last time, Ellen is it, it really mean melanin to me, you know what I mean? And just like you touched on earlier, if the sun is spitting out these crazy flares, the only ones that got problems is is these albions because they don't produce melanin. You get the nail in the hair, bro. No doubt, no doubt. Shit, peace and love, guy. Uh, uh, keep your, hey, keep up the good work on the radio show, and I'm gonna keep tuning in. Oh, I appreciate that, brother. Thank you. All right. Um, let me see if we got any more questions here. All right, that was the last one. We'll be getting ready to do now, y'all, for the next um, 20 minutes is go over some of these clips in which that um, we've been provided with and um, we want you all to hear him. You know, we want you to hear um, this clip uh, from Ronald Reagan. And I was secure for you and your children. I couldn't help at one point in our discussions with, privately with General Secretary Gorbachev, when we stopped to think that we are God's children, wherever we may live in the world. I couldn't help but say to him, just think how easy his task and mine might be in these meetings that we held. If suddenly there was a threat to this world from some other species from another planet outside of the universe, we forget all of the local differences that we have between our countries, and we would find out once and for all that we really are. So hopefully y'all heard that And by hearing it You have to come to the conclusion Is that just like the brother just finished saying That they are preparing All right Whether it's from As they said from beings from other worlds Of course we got another scenario In which that goes on In which that states Um which um, we're going to definitely get to, and which that goes into, I guess you would say, the economy. You know, the economy in which that um, they would want to say. Welcome back to the five. Thanks, Pop. So, uh, do you know who Paul Krigman is? 
He's a Nobel Prize winning economist. He writes for the New York Times. The White House loves him, and he's bat poop crazy. <laughs> Not as crazy as Uncle Bob, mind you, but he's close. <laughs> Sunday, he was on CNN's Fareed Zakaria's GPS, which may be a travel show. I don't know. <laughs> but there, to boost the economy, Paul suggested a novel approach to the same old, same old government spending. Mistakenly scare the public with an impending apocalypse. It really is out of this world. <laughs> if we discovered that, uh, you know, space aliens were planning to attack and we needed a, a massive build-up to counter the, the space alien threat um, and really inflation and budget deficits took secondary uh, place to that, um, this slump would be over in 18 months. And then if we discovered, whoops, we made a mistake. There aren't actually any... So we need ours and a while. That's what you're saying. No, that's a, that's a, there was a Twilight Zone episode like this. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you heard... Paul Krugman, he suggests an alien invasion could save the economy. <laughs> this is what he suggests. Now, that goes next to what Ronald Reagan said that, well, if there was ever an invasion from an out-of-world, other planets, extraterrestrial life force, whatever attack the planet Earth, me and Govatros would have to realize that we are merely human. So, when you get that, along with this right here, we see what they're moving towards. We spoke about before, on a, on a show before, uh, when we got to Project Bluebeam, which was one, one of our most popular shows, as a matter of fact. On Project Bluebeam, we went over the fact of them bringing in an individual who was called the world savior, the Lord Maitreya. Um, and when... When um, Obama got elected as president in 2008, by 2009, the fall of 2009, the commercial was already on TV. It was on CNN, it was on C-SPAN, it was on Sci-Fi Channel, A&E, it was on History Channel, and it was on some other channels. The commercials was about Lord Maitreya, the crisis here. If you have seen these lights in the sky, these UFOs, these crafts, they were all contributed to this man in this day and time. This is what they were saying. So we know, according to William Bill Cooper, once again, we got to go back to Bill Cooper now, because what he's saying obviously is correct. He said that they were fake in alien attack or invasion. This is what he says in Behold a Pale Horse. Will Cooper, William Bill Cooper, he says this, that they were fake in alien attack. We're hearing it from the leading economist in the world, Paul Grumman. He said that faking an alien attack could save the economy. Within 18 months, the economy deficit would be over. The, the, um, the, um, the depression, the recession would be over. <laughs> this is amazing. This is truly amazing. Now we have 2012, the truth. The new age people. To trap them into believing they have to prepare for this date so they're caught totally unawares by what's going to happen in the next two months. There's a little comet called Solomon. Every time this little comet is in alignment with our planet and either the sun or some other body, there's a major earthquake. Now, vibrational harmonics work such that if they directly line up, you get an amplification of energy. February 27, 2010, this little comet was in a direct alignment between the Earth and the Sun. On that day, there was an earthquake in Chile. That's just a coincidence, isn't it? Well, there was another coincidence, because when the Earth came around the other side here, and the Earth was in alignment, and then the comet was a little bit closer, but they're in alignment again, and that was September 4, 2010. There was an earthquake in Christchurch. And then the Earth came back around again, and then the next time it was in alignment with the Sun, and now this is closer, March, or whatever, there's an earthquake in Japan. Once the coincidence. Twice is pushing it, three times, wait a minute, something's going on here. The other one that will happen is August 17th. I've gone publicly on this one. 
because there is an alignment between the Earth, Venus, the Sun, and Mercury. They're in a straight line, and neither is at right angles to the Sun. At August now, that's where he was off at was, he said, August the 17th. Of course, we know that was Marcus Garvey Day, so Marcus Garvey was not going to allow that to happen on his birthday. Remember, Marcus Garvey said that um, um, that he would be um, 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 in a whirlwind. You know, that was the um, the speech that he gave. It's called um, whirlwind. And if you go back to that speech, he says that um, in death he would be even more, you know, of a fighter against the racism and against the things in which that would be perpetrated against the people of color, and that he would come back with over a million of the ancestors and souls, and they would transform into a pestilence, into um, disease, into um, earthquakes, into um, whirlwinds, hurricanes, and all of these things in order to protect us from what they would have to come against and what they was doing. So we didn't see this earthquake take place on Marcus Garvey's birthday, August the 17th. That was not going to happen. However, it did take place a week later, on August the 23rd. So he was a few days off, according to his calculation, but we'll continue listening to what he's saying. The 17th, I'm being told there's going to be a massive earthquake on the planet. It would be probably be um, somewhere between Alaska and San Francisco. The next alignment happens on September 26th. As you notice, he was wrong about the West Coast. He thought it was going to be on the West Coast. Actually, it took place here on the East Coast. So that's something else. And it is between us and the sun. And at that point, it is 0.38 away from us. When it was two away, we had a magnitude 9 earthquake. The gravitational forces, the infrared forces, they were 25 times greater at that date. The whole Pacific Rim will go with magnitude 12 to 15 earthquakes. New Zealand will disappear, Japan will disappear, Indonesia will disappear, China will disappear, Korea will disappear, Russia will disappear, um, the West Coast of America will disappear. The whole East Coast of Australia will not be affected by the earthquakes per se, but they will be affected by the tidal waves that come from it. There is going to be a cosmic sonic shockwave that will totally blow out our Van Allen belts and our magnetic field and will leave the planet totally open to gamma radiation. If you are out in the open at that point, you will literally be fried alive. It's like the vampire jumping out into the light. <laughs> That's if you're European. Yes. <laughs> If you are out as a melanated being at that time period, you will be transformed. If your melanin is cleansed with B complex, with B6, B12, and you have the proper amount of nutrition and your endocrine glands are up to par, then you will be transformed into the twinkling of an eye and you will become a man ethereal or a being ethereal or a woman ethereal. In other words, you will be transformed from a third-dimensional state to a fifth-dimensional state. All right, let's continue on. That's what's going to happen. When this object goes across the sky, it's going to cause an eclipse that will last at least three days. So you're going to have all these volcanoes going on, pyroclastic blasts going everywhere, level 12, 13 magnitude earthquakes. The electromagnetic pulses are going to fry all electrics. You're going to have wind speeds over 1,000 miles an hour. You're going to have surface temperatures of 60 degrees plus. All the water surface is going to dry up. The volcanic ash is going to cause huge amounts of acid rain. There will be wildfires all over the planet. So, um, this is the guy by, um, of Alex uh, Retro. He's the one in which that is speaking all this information in which that you just finished hearing. I suggest that you go and check him out. It's several parts to it. It's called 2012 The Truth. You're not being told. The clock runs out September 25th, 2011. Now, this correlates to what the brother was saying. So, so between September to October, he said October the 28th, 2011, is because of the year off from the um, Omak Mayan calendar. Um, and, of course, we know that the um, Chinese have that same year. Their year, um, I think, 
um, a year um, ahead of us. So it's actually 2012 now, according to the Chinese um, calendar. Um, so um, that is right on alignment based on them having, obviously, that same type of information in which that we're talking about. So between September and October, we're going to see more disasters, obviously, from what is being told and what is being said here. I can't say it's going to be to that magnitude in which that he's talking about, not for us, but what I'm telling you is to prepare yourselves. How do you prepare yourself? Through the science of art and the art of breathing, through the science of controlling the mind by not having fear. Yesterday when the um, earthquake was happening, we didn't fear. I knew exactly what was going on when it started happening. I told the sister on the phone, I got to get off because the earthquake is occurring. And I got off the phone. Uh, me and my wife ran outside. We talked to the neighbors. said, did you all feel that? They said, yeah, yeah, it was trembling, you know, so forth and so on. But they thought it was from an airplane. I know I didn't hear no airplane fly over in order to produce no sonic boom in order that would cause the shaking, you know. So, you know, I thought, you know, um, and then when the transformers blow, you know, we feel, you know, a little bit of shaking from when the transformers blow. Um, or there was no heavy industrial trucks like the brother was talking about, anything in which that passed by. You know, it was none of that. It was just simply the house was shaking and we was able to see the house shake. Now, nothing in the house really fell, even though my wife said she said she heard a glass fall somewhere in the house, but went back looking for it, we didn't see it. So um, that was one of our indicators of um, what was going on. You know what I'm saying? That was the ancestors obviously, you know, moving us, you know, um, out because um, of that particular sound, even though we didn't see no glass, um, you know, later on. So the ancestors are here. They will help us. They all and will protect us. We just have to align ourselves with them. We have to um, align our chakras. We have to align um, our internal energy in order to protect, to project outwardly what we really need and want and desire. We can't be sitting by just hoping and, and um, being help, hopeless and helpless. We got to be active in everything going that we do. This is real revolution, revolution of the mind, of the body, of the spirit, of the soul. So this is what we say. We're going to um, go out. We're going to say hotep. Um, assalamu alaikum, Islam, peace. First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that Buddha consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. And others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know how intention is straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're gonna take this level up a notch. We're gonna have stuff to do here. This is not just gonna be about philosophies and theories. 